And we are back to begin the second half. 40 to 22 now the score. And we got a foul already. Nine seconds into the game. That's going to send Trevino to the line. Two shots coming up for Trevino. That one won't fall. 40 to 22. The lead will remain 18. Second shot coming up. And that one will fall. 41-22. A.B. Lozoya with the ball. Looks to pass. He's going to instead shoot. And he's going to get that one to fall. 25 and we're going to have a quick timeout already. Seven minutes, 38 seconds on the clock. We'll be right back in just a little bit after this quick timeout. Help us give back to the community. Volunteer your time or donate to Habitat for Humanity Restore. Check out HabitatRGV.org for more info. Or drop by our McGowan or Harlingen stores. Restore. Great stuff. Great prices. Great cause. And we're back. Into action. That ball almost stripped away. Trevino able to stay with it. Fakes the shot. Silverio going to pass this one off to Kai Money. Money's got the ball. As he looks to pass. He will. Three ball is up and good. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Carlos Esteve. 44 to 25. Seven minutes on the clock. Lozoya with a no-look pass to the outside. Looking to drive, another pass. Baseline jumper off the mark to the right. Won't fall, coming down as Esteve. Ahead of everyone. Looked like it was going to be too much on that one. He still somehow gets it to fall. That's going to be 46 to 25. That's the outside. Lozoya comes up with it. Euro steps. And looking for the foul. Looked like he might have gotten hit on the arm. Referee didn't see it. Now Kai Money with the ball. And a double dribble called. A.B. Lozoya with the ball now. Covered by Kai Money. Three ball up. Almost not quite enough. That one's going to be rebounded. Cesar Garcia, no look pass. Pete Silverio looking already at the rim. Wasn't expecting the ball. Well, was expecting the ball, but looking at the rim. Hits him. That's going to go out of bounds. That's going to be Santa Rosa ball. Inbound is going to be Ryan Perez for Santa Rosa. A.B. Lozoya has it past the outside. Quick shot up. Off just a bit. Trevino with the rebound. Kai Money with it now. Bounce pass. Esteve with it. Looks to go to his right. Has to come back. Good de defense by uh, Lozoya. Euro step. That ball rolls around off of the rim. And Lozoya gets the rebound. Nice dribble. Pull up three. Almost. It's going to be rebounded by Sam Torres. Sam Torres gets rejected by Trevino. And a foul call. That one's going to stay here. That foul is going to go against Trevino. I believe that's his second of the game. Oh, it's third of the game. Sam Torres inbounding. That ball is up. Off the glass and in for Ryan Perez. 27-46 now. Cesar Garcia holds the ball in the air. Somehow kept his... Uh, kept his height up there. Now Lozoya with the ball. Looks to pass. Bounce pass to the end outside. Jonah Agado has it. Pulls up for three. Good. 
kind of a deep three, 30 to 46. Lead cut down to 16, four minutes and 40 seconds. Four minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. Now Kai with full court press coming at him. Cesar Garcia gets around it all, passes outside. Esteve gets it, tries the bounce pass with a no look. It's going to be last touched by Santa Rosa as they were trying to steal it. Now inbounding is going to be Carlos Esteve. Bounce pass to the outside. Garcia has it. Now we got Pete Silverio with it. Trevino now. Back to Pete. Silverio passes outside. Kai Money has it. Inside. Up for two and in. Camilo Trevino. It's two more. Four minutes, nine seconds on the clock. 48 to 30. Here in the third, pass to the outside. A lot of passing now back to Lozoya. Lozoya left open. Gets a man to jump and sinks the triple. 48 to 33. Santa Rosa trying to make a comeback here. Pete Silverio is going to get fouled. I believe it's going to be a blocking foul on Sam Torres. It's going to be his second foul of the game. Inbounding is going to be Kai Money for St. Joseph. They have the lead right now up by 15, 48 to 33, 3 minutes, 48 seconds. Now, Cesar Garcia has it. A turnover there. Inbounding is going to be Ryan Perez for Santa Rosa over to Lozoya. Lozoya passes outside. Three ball up for Jonah. Jonah, same spot, same outcome. 38, 36-48. Cutting this lead down slowly, slowly, slowly. Now Kai Money looking to drive. Wants to keep that lead. Puts it up for two and in. 50 to 36. And we're going to have a quick timeout. Thank you for joining us here. Stay tuned. This game's getting very, very interesting. 14-point game now. Stay tuned after this quick commercial break. Possibilities are all around us. We see potential in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision, and connections, we turn great ideas into action in communities all around the world. Together, we can make real change happen. We're Rotary. We are people of action. Get involved at Rotary.org. Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. And we're back. Lozoya with the ball now. Three minutes, ten seconds. 14-point game. Sam Torres up for two. Baseline jumper. Good. 38 to 50. Three minutes, two seconds. Pass outside. High money's got it. Or excuse me, Pete Silverio. Cesar Garcia now with it. Now Kai Money has the ball. Looks to shoot. He's not gonna shoot. And this ball's gonna be passed around quite a little bit. High money, Pete Silverio, pass inside, Trevino up for two, gets the foul. That's going to send him to the line. He was in the motion of shooting, two minutes, 34 seconds. And a 12-point game, St. Joseph. Trevino now at the line. First shot up, it's the front of the rim, bounces out. And another substitution. Out comes Pete Silverio, and in comes Marte Rodriguez. Trevino getting set for his second free throw. This one's up. And good. 51-38. 13-point game. As for the outside, Lozoya has it. Turns around. Looks to drive back inside, loses it. 
somehow stays with it. Inside to Sam Torres, hand in the face. That one's not going to fall. It's going to be rebounded. Pass the inside. Two. That one's going to fall in. 53 to 38 here in the third. Referee is discussing what happened on the other end. Was it a goal 10? No basket. They're going to call no basket. We're going to take those two points off for St. Joseph. Coach is trying to argue his case. Now we're going to get the inbound. Lozoya inbounding to Ryan Perez. Lozoya ends up with the ball once again. Met very closely by Marte Rodriguez. Inside bounce pass. Perez. Sam Torres gets it. Puts it up for two. And he's going to get that one to fall. 40 to 51 now. An 11 point game. Two minutes and six seconds on the clock. Pass to the outside. Goes over his head. Able to stay with it. Rodriguez has it. Garcia up for three and in. You could hear the net swish from here. 54 to 40. That's how Garcia gets three on the board. Minute and 45 seconds on the clock here in the third. Pass to the inside. Sam Torres gets it. Swatted away by Trevino. I believe that's his third block of the game. And a reach-in foul is going to be called. That's going to go against Sam Torres. He just had the basket. And another substitution. Out comes Carlos Esteve. And in comes Rodrigo Sanchez. Inbounding is Kai Money. Kai looking to throw this one inside. Let's see who he gives it to. It's batted away. And it's going to remain... St. Joseph ball. Fans don't agree. Kai inbounds this one high to Trevino. Trevino with it has a man outside. He's going to fake the pass off the glass. A little bit too much force on that one. Lozoya gets the ball now after the rebound by Sam Torres. Lozoya passed to the outside. That one gets going to get stripped. Cesar Garcia has it. Garcia, Euro step, puts it up for two. And it's going to be a blocking foul on Sam. Or excuse me, A.B. Lozoya. Cesar Garcia is going to go to the line now for two. I believe that's A.B. Lozoya's fourth foul of the game. And that one's good. 55-40. to Now getting set for his second free throw. Second free throw up and good for Garcia. 57 to 40 now. Oh, I accidentally hit the two points. Sorry. Sorry about that. 56 40. And a foul called on Sam Torres. That's going to be St. Joseph Ball and a substitution. Torres comes out. And in comes Adam Cavazos. Actually, instead, it's going to be Ryan Perez coming out. Inbounds there. Cesar Garcia has it. Has a man ahead of everybody. And a foul is going to go against Jay Guerra. 
as Marte Rodriguez is trying to make the basket there. 56 to 40. And a chance at two. Sinks the first one. 57 to 40. 58 seconds on the clock. Second shot is up, bounces around, it won't fall. That's going to go against Marte Rodriguez. I guess he left the line before the ball hit the rim. 56.8 seconds on the clock. Now coming down the other way, A.B. Lozoya. Lozoya, guarded by two, gets around past the outside. Deep three ball. What a shot by Jonah Agado way downtown that's three from that exact location past the outside looking to answer with a three of their own they won't be able to Lozoya gets the rebound and the foul now Lozoya with the ball 29 seconds on the clock we have another shout out to Jay Guerra from Santa Rosa. Ernie Torres Navarro is giving that shout out. Adrian Lozano says 1987 through 88, Warriors never lost to St. Joe. And I do agree, John Cavazos, this is a very cool looking gym. We're in a dome here. Court is below, well, everything. It looks awesome. And that shot is good. 57, 45, 20 seconds on the clock. Bounce pass. Nice, nice ball handling. Nice movement. Got to see you up for two. Won't get it. And somehow, Javi Montemayor extends his hang time in the air. Three ball up. No good. Six seconds on the clock. Coming down the other way now. Santa Rosa, if they want to just... Try to throw this ball up. Lozoya gets it up, but it's no good. 57-45 to end the third. Fourth and final quarter coming up. Stay tuned. We're going to have a quick timeout. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you're not already, and we'll be right back. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Doing some gardening or home improvements this weekend? Visit Habitat for Humanity Restore before you start. Check out HabitatRGV.org for more info. Or drop by our McGallan or Harlingen stores. Restore. Great stuff. Great prices. Great cause. And we're back to resume this game. Fourth and final quarter. Lozoya, or excuse me. I believe that was Jay Guetta putting the ball up. Time money. Saves that one from being stolen. Kai getting around his defender. Lozoya with a steal. Lozoya, one man to beat. Tries to put it up. Jay get out there for the cleanup. 47-57, a 10-point ball game. Out of all that's been going on here, Cesar Garcia getting around two defenders. Bounce pass to the inside. And the whistle blown. We're going to see what that one is going to be about. I don't know if it was kickball. Looked like it might have been. And it was a kickball. I got the confirmation. High money looking to inbound. Looking for where to throw it. And a push. That's going to go against Adam Cavazos, I believe. Push. Not really sure who he pushed. Carlos Esteva, I believe. Oh, no. That's going to be Camilo Trevino. Really sold that one there. <laughs> it's going to send him to the line. I believe we're in bonus, so it's one and one. 57-47, first shot is up, and that one's good. He's going to stay at the line for another. 58-47, we're about 30 seconds in to the fourth and final quarter. 
Trevino set, and that one's good. 59-47 now. Seven minutes, 25 seconds on the clock. Three ball is up. Off the mark just a little bit for Jonah. Cesar Garcia with it. Nice behind the back move. Gets away. Three ball is up. And good. One, two, three. Rodriguez. Excuse me. Carlos Esteve gets that one to go for three. 62-47. Bounce pass to the outside. Forgot to change the quarter on my computer. Everything's changed there. Up for two. Looked like he might have wanted a dunk. High money. Wanted a dunk, wanted a layup. Well, couldn't make up his mind on the way there. Ends up hitting the rim. Gets the contact. That's going to be Jay Guetta heading to the line, looking to convert another and one for Santa Rosa. They had one earlier. Great shot there by Guetta. Able to find out where he's at, able to put the ball in. That free throw is up, no good. And that's going to be poked away. It looks like it should be Santa Rosa ball. Instead, referee calls it the other way. Fans not really liking it. Now inbounding is going to be Trevino. Trevino up high to Garcia. Garcia comes down with it. Three men in front of him. Double teamed. Kai Money with the ball now. Money looking around. Garcia to his outside. Garcia now covered one-on-one. -on -one. Sam Torres. Kai Money looking to dribble. Cuts to his left. Pass to the inside. Trevino gets a man to jump and couldn't finish that two points. But he will get to the line now for two. Trevino. That one's going to go against... I heard Cavazos, number 32, Adam Cavazos. So Trevino now at the line. 62-49 is the score here in the fourth. 63-49. to Second shot coming up. Six minutes, 18 seconds on the clock. And sinks the next four. 64-49. Goes away with the ball, pass to the outside. Jonah Agado with it, gets around his screen, set by Jay Guerra, passes outside to Lozoya. Lozoya now looking. Tries to find out where to go. He's going to end up pulling this one from deep three range. Garcia gets the rebound, passes it off to Kai Money. Kai now with it, passes half court. Now Garcia with it, covered by Lozoya. Kai with it. Looks to drive. Loses it. And they're going to say it's Santa Rosa ball. And the referee overturns it. It's going to remain St. Joseph ball. 64-49 now. 15-point game. And substitutions. Mike Bermia comes in for Jonah Agado. Inbounds pass there. Kai Money has it. Looks to pass. He's got Pete Silverio open. Silverio calls out a play. Now pass. And we're going to get a travel call on Pete Silverio. Bounce pass and tied to Lozoya after the inbounds from Sam Torres. Pass the outside. Floater blocked away. Sent the other way by Cesar Garcia. Kai Money with it. Up for two. Trying to get redemption from what happened earlier. That one's not going to fall either. Mike Bermia has it ahead of everyone. That one's going to be swatted away also. Three ball up. And a foul. That's going to go against Cesar Garcia. He was fouled on the three-point line. That's going to send him to the line for three now. 64-49, and Santa Rosa crowd is loving it. Four minutes, 55 seconds, 15-point game. Santa Rosa really has to step it up if they look to come back from this one. 15-point deficit here in the fourth, late in the fourth. 
Now Jay Guetta. First one won't fall. Second chop coming up. He'll get that one. 50 to 64. And the second one will fall, 51-64. Substitution now. Out comes Jay Guetta. In comes Mario Bocanegra. Inbounds pass from Trevino. Trevino into Esteve. And now Cesar Garcia all the way down the other end of the court. And Pete Silverio. Tie money with it. Bounce pass inside. Trevino. Gets the foul, and that ball rattles around. Will fall in. 66-51, and a chance for the end one if he can convert it. That's Bocanegra's first foul of the game. Four minutes, 39 seconds. Can't get it to fall. Behind the back pass somehow by Sam Torres on the ground. Mike Permia has it up for two. That one won't fall for Sam Torres. But that's going to get hit out of bounds. And that's going to be St. Joseph ball. Four minutes, 26 seconds on the clock. 15-point ball game still. Ty Money with it. Passes inside. Trevino has it, now past the outside, Cesar Garcia, pass to the other end, Kai Money with it, pass to the outside, three ball is up, no good, Garcia gets the rebound, he's going to put it back up for two, cleans it up, 68-51, now a 17 point game, four minutes, four seconds, and counting, A.B. Lozoya with the ball now, pass to the outside, Mocanegra has it, over everyone, pass, The fall, Cesar Garcia has it. Fakes the shot. It's Pete Silverio with it. Garcia back to the outside. Trying to get fancy with it. Now A.B. Lozoya with the ball. Three minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Pass the inside. Lozoya fakes the shot, now passes inside. It's Chris Flores trying to get people to jump, got one. Lozoya with the ball, looks to pass, gets around, and they're going to call him out of bounds. I'll pass to the outside. Pete Silverio has it. Cesar Garcia to the other end. Three ball. Bounces around. Won't fall. Put back. Good cleanup by Kai Money. 70 to 51. Lozoya with the ball across his half court. Fakes the shot. Passes outside. Bermia. Bermia. Inside pass. Good pass. Better finish for Adam Cavasso. 70 to 53 now. Pete Silverio takes the shot, loses it. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds now. Substitutions. Out comes, well, let's see who comes out. Lozoya coming out. Now Bermia has it. Guarded by Kai Money. Pass to the outside, Bocanegra now. Another pass to the top of the key. Pass inside, let's see what the referees say. That's going to be Santa Rosa ball. Adam Cavazzo is inbounding this one. 
And a foul call. And a substitution now. Out comes Camilo Trevino taking his spot. Javi Montemayor. Fifty-three to seventy now. First shot is up and good. From Mia now has it. Coming out is Adam Cavazos. Taking his place is Christian Castillo. Never mind, it's Ray Davila. Second shot will fall. 55 to 70 now. Kai Money's got it. Two minutes, eight seconds on the clock. And a reach in foul is going to be called. That's going to go against Bermia. It's going to be his first foul. And that's going to send Cesar Garcia to the line. Two shots coming up for Garcia. First one is up. Off the front of the rim. They thought it was one and one. <laughs> A little bit of confusion there. Two minutes, three seconds. Out comes Bermuda, in comes Leo Casas to take his spot. Garcia gets another chance at the free throws. That one's up, rattles around, and that one will fall. 71-55 now. And a substitution. Out comes Kai Money. And taking his spot is going to be Rodrigo Sanchez. Inbounding this one is going to be Sanchez. Sanchez gets it off to Pete Silverio. Silverio now outside to Estevez. That's the outside. Sanchez has it. Now Pete Silverio. Now out to Estevez. Pass to the inside. Now outside. And ball moving around. A lot of ball movement. Just trying to kill some time. A minute and 40 seconds on the clock. 16 point lead now, 71-55. A minute and 30 on the clock. Inside pass, Garcia tries to finish, he won't be able to. Bounce pass to the outside. Pete Silverio with it. Now back to the outside. Pete's got the ball. Pass to the inside, puts it up for two off the mark. Trying to clean up, won't be able to. And that's going to be rebounded by Boca Negra. Now coming down. Santa Rosa to the outside. Nice move. And rejected by Cesar Garcia. Gets the rebound after the miss. 58 seconds on the clock. Cesar coming down the other end. Puts it up for two and in. 73, 50, 55. And we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back after this. 52 seconds on the clock. Stay tuned for the rest of the game. We'll be right back. Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. And we're back now. 52.3 seconds on the clock. St. Joseph with the lead. 73-55 late in the fourth. Coming down the other way. Leo Casas has it. Casas gets around his defender. Bounce pass to the outside. One more pass. Up for two. And a foul call. That's going to go against Jacob Esparza. 
38.61 seconds on the clock. And now Chris Flores at the line. First shot is up. Off to the right just a tad. Second shot coming up. Second shot rolls around. Won't be able to be saved. Instead, it's going the opposite way. Picked up by Rodrigo Sanchez. Pete Silverio has it. Nice behind the back move. Doesn't cross half court. Pass to the outside. Rodrigo Sanchez has it. Now Pete Silverio. 18 seconds on the clock. Jab step there. Pass to the outside. Rodriguez now inside. Now bounce pass. Takes the shot. Tries to get it to fall. Won't be able to. Five seconds on the clock. Headed the other way. Casas has it. And we're going to have a travel. Headed back the other way. 1.98 seconds. And looks like this one's pretty much over. St. Joseph has the lead. 73-55. 1.98 seconds on the clock. And that's going to do it. We thank you for joining us here on Rio Sports Live, whether you're watching from Facebook, YouTube, or our website. Don't forget to follow us if you're not already on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It was a great game tonight. St. Joseph came away with the victory over Santa Rosa. And like I said, if you're not already following, make sure you do share this video, like this video, comment on this video. Let your friends and family see that you are watching it on Real Sports Live. I'm your host, Michael De Leon, and until next time, we'll see you later, and good night. Fans, welcome once again to a new edition of the Inside the Gym uh, that comes your way here at Brownsville St. Joseph on our Stars Network on the Brownsville Channel. In today's edition of our show, we'll be visiting with some college coaches that came in town to give a special workout to some RGB players. We'll visit with some players that are currently going to be playing here at St. Joe, players from around the RGB, and a former player who receives a special award. It's inside the gym, and it's coming right here on the St. Joe channel on the Stars Network. Hey fans, I want to invite you out for our Midnight Madness coverage as 2022 high school football begins right here at St. Joe for another year. St. Joe Bloodhounds on the channel on our Stars Network on Rio Sports Live will be coming to you midnight, July 31st, August 1st, right here on the Stars Network from St. Joe. Inside the gym here at St. Joseph Academy in Bronzeville, Texas, featuring today players and coaches involved in a special workout. Coaches who are in town, including coaches from Our Lady of the Lake and San Antonio College, are looking for players to take the step to the next level. Importance of being here? Well, the coaches say it best. We're excited. Uh, no bias is and the basketball industry is excited to be here. This is our first camp in the Valley. It's something we've been trying to do for about the last two or three years. Uh, and we're excited. We had a good 20 plus uh, student athletes, both male and female. And we brought two different programs. We have our Lady Lake men's basketball program. We have San Antonio College men's basketball program. And we also have the Our Lady Lake women's program. So uh, the kids in the RGB area are getting uh, exposure that a lot of times they don't get. So we're just excited to, to open that up. Uh, I mean, this is, this is like nostalgia for me. I mean, I grew up playing in, in gyms like this. Uh, camps like this didn't really exist when I was, when I was coming up. Uh, where college coaches just kind of had the freedom to go and host different camps and be able to recruit uh, and be able to, to give back to the community at the same time. Uh, so being able to come down here uh, to an area that, that's not uh, really explored uh, and it's really underrated, uh, it feels really awesome to be able to help these kids and give them an opportunity. Well, being from uh, San Antonio, we're a, first of all, we're a two-year school, San Antonio College. And uh, by coming down to South Texas, it allows us to, to expand our recruitment. It was an opportunity to take a look at some of the uh, uh, high school players, graduating players that may be not get exposed. We're a two-year school. Uh, it, gives a, it gives a lot of student athletes an opportunity to come in and play for a couple of years. And then for those that have the potential to play at the next level, at a uh, four-year school, uh, we offer that opportunity for a lot of students. So again, it just gives us an opportunity to expand our 
Some of these players have opportunities to play at the high school level for another year or two. Other players are just entering into high school and other players have been around the high school ranks and are still looking to achieve some college ranks. Coaches talk about the benefits. Well, as a matter of fact, we picked up a couple of players for this year from the Valley. And uh, again, uh, San Antonio College, we're, we're more of a local, uh, you know, a local conference, but we also have some very competitive games such as uh, Temple Junior College, Hope Bend Junior College. We play a lot of the development teams from uh, Division Three schools and even some NAI schools such as Our Lady of the Lake. allows us to showcase a lot of our players. And we're hoping, again, by being putting on this basketball camp here in uh, South Texas, they'll open up some opportunities for students to become familiar with our school, San Antonio College. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity, something that we're going to continue to explore uh, and just kind of see, uh, you know, where we can find and where we can go from there. Here on Inside the Gym, our edition in Brownsville, St. Joseph, today featuring current players, former players, and coaches uh, conducting a clinic. We had a chance to catch up with one of the former players. He played his days at Port Isabel, a graduate of the Port Isabel Tarpons, currently at Our Lady of the Lake University. Cole Pinkerton will receive a special award. We'll visit with him next on Inside the Gym. Whether you're visiting or vacationing at South Padre Island, be sure to book your place to stay with Island Services, locally owned for over 40 years. Trusted, reliable, for condo and beach house rentals, call and visit the website today, Island Services. Back here on Inside the Gym at Brownsville St. Joseph Academy in Brownsville, Texas. When our cameras were rolling during Port Isabel games in the past few years, the name Pinkerton was familiar to most fans. Cole Pinkerton was the final Pinkerton to come through the mix playing at Port Isabel. He now currently is at Our Lady of the Lake. After a freshman year, he talks about Our Lady of the Lake University in year one. The difference between high school and college is a huge gap, especially the speed, the strength, the IQ of the players. It's, it's all a next level step, and I think this first year really helped me realize that. This, this offseason, I've been trying to work hard. I definitely tried to put on some weight, and you know, those guys bullied me around a bit. But definitely on the court, off the court, like I said, it's just how, how much you want to put in the work to study. You know, it could be a lot easier or it could be a lot harder. It's just up to you. Our Lady of the Lake University presents an award each year to one of the players in a scholarship form. And Cole this year is a recipient of a special award. Uh, so the Nova ISS Academic Scholarship uh, is for 80 students, uh, boy or girl, um, that's deserving of a scholarship that's above a 2.0 GPA. And uh, we're proud to give uh, the 2022 Nova ISS Academic Scholarship to Cole Pinkerton. Cole has been a tremendous player uh, student athlete uh, and an ambassador uh, for the Lady Lake University men's basketball program. In general, he's been a leader on the court, off the court. He's done uh, community hours, uh, lots of community service uh, inside San Antonio, on campus, off campus. It's just a, a, a symbol of what a true uh, saint is. Cole continues to progress forward as he looks forward to his next year. He talks about the importance of receiving this award. I mean, I'm very grateful, extremely grateful to Coach B. Dell. They, uh, my first year of college, I honestly loved it. You know, I think it, it's a huge opportunity, and you know, it's a big step for me to grow. I was doing everything a lot more independently. You know, the coaches they support, they help as much as they can. The teachers, it's been a great university. Uh, the schoolwork, the basketball work, it's all got to be, it's all on your own. You know, if you want to wake up in the morning, you want to go get those extra shots, you got to test that night or that ne that next day. You know, it's just all about the independent. The individual's work ethic and how hard they want it. Congratulations once again to Cole Pinkerton, formerly of Port Isabel and currently at Our Lady of the Lake University, and we wish him the best of luck in next season. Coming up, it's not just a mix of current players, there's some former players, and we caught up with one of them from Los Fresnos. He was part of the historic team. We'll visit next on Inside the Gym. 
Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles, located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, is filled with vintage items, collectibles, and a selection of vinyl records that's as good as it gets. Every shelf, every aisle, and table is filled daily by a number of vendors that ensures that something here just might be the item you have to have. The vital record area helps bring an added atmosphere that makes for the fun trip when stepping back in time with the memories. Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles in San Benito. Back here on Inside the Gym in Brownsville, Texas at St. Joe Academy. When Los Fresnos was making a historic run, one of the key players was an instrumental part of a team that made it into elite rounds as far as basketball goes in Los Fresnos. None have traveled further. Luis has been through a couple of injuries. He's still eyeing a chance to play at the college levels. We talked to him about his journey and the importance of being here today. Oh, I signed up right away. Um, you know, the opportunity I was looking for, I've been working this whole time, and I think it's a great, a great uh, time for me to put my, my skills to work and my improvement, and hopefully the best for the coach tonight. I mean, I've always wanted to play college, but uh, I, I did turn my ACL, so I kind of, it kind of slowed it down, but I went to rehab, and I kept on pushing, I didn't give up, and well, now I'm here, and you know, I'm hoping to play the odds and play college basketball. I'm mentally strong, you know, I know it's a tough time, you know, a lot of time working basketball, a lot of time for me. Weightlifting, squatting, you know, I couldn't walk for a couple weeks, but, you know, it kept in my head, you know, it takes time, and I kept on putting in the work, going to therapy, doing some stuff at home, and hopefully it pays off here, and I feel like I became a better player overall. Here on this edition of Inside the Gym in Brownsville at St. Joe Academy, we continue to visit with players. Thanks again for the visit with Luis, and we wish him the best of luck as he continues to seek that dream of playing at the college level. Players! Currently on the floor include boys and girls. One of the girls transferred from an idea school to a Brownsville school, and now she's eyeing her senior year. A visit coming up on Inside the Gym. Plan your escape. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? Sopadre.com Back here on Inside the Gym at Brownsville St. Joseph Academy in Brownsville, Texas. One of the players on the floor trying to get in front of these college coaches today is Daniela Sauceda. Sauceda played at an idea school before transferring to Brownsville Veterans Memorial for her junior year. Eligibility-wise, she was unable to play. Last year, they had a great run. She talked about what she did. Uh, it is like uh, really great for me because uh, I've always played in Mexico in like three years. It's like my second year playing in varsity in uh, high school, and being here, I feel like it's like a great opportunity to be seen by culture. Like I feel like it's like a dream because I've never played this. I've only played like in high school. So I think it's a great opportunity for me to be seen by other people, not just. Uh, for Sauceda, as she enters her senior year, she has anxious moments and is energetic, trying to get on the floor and present a good product to these college coaches at the same time. She knows in one year it's all on the line, and she talks about the importance of events like this and her upcoming senior year. Uh, I feel like it's uh, really important because I really want to get an opportunity to go to uh, to play college basketball. I feel like. We want to wish the best of luck to Daniela Sauceda as she enters her senior years at Brownsville Veterans Memorial. Players looking to gain the attention of college coaches are doing so at younger and younger ages because they understand what it means to get to the next level. You have to be seen by the next level. Regina Tovar has been playing for St. Joe Academy for a couple of years. I'm already going into my senior year, so it's time for me to start focusing on where I want to play in college or if I want to play in college. And, like, it's just time for me to like show my skills and get like try to get noticed by colleges. I 
started playing basketball in fourth grade, but I started getting like really serious in the summer of fifth grade, going into sixth. So I just started training really hard and going into different teams, travel teams, and just started really focusing on the sport. For Tovar, as she enters her junior year, things seem to be changing a bit on the goal set. She talks about the mindset and the goals coming up into this year. No, yes, definitely. This is the year where I know that I'll have many eyes on me. Uh, so, like, yeah, it's, I have to be putting a lot of work, especially in the summer, when I know that like some people might not be putting as much work that I do. So, like, I'm always trying to be like one step like above, just to like try to get. Better. Coaches talk about what it means to be here at a school in the RGV and getting a look at players. Yeah, I think it's very important, especially to build a relationship with the RGV. We have three students that are on the uh, men's basketball program from the RGV. Uh, so I think it's important that we build that pipeline. There's a lot of talent here that uh, gets overlooked. And it's because a lot of universities, programs, uh, for whatever reason, they came down, cannot come down to the RGV. And so we're excited to start doing camps and get some exposure. We'll be seeing a lot of Regina Tovar and the uh, St. Joe Bloodhound ladies as they play on the basketball court right here on this very gym. Our coaches had a chance to talk with parents and explain what is needed to get to the next level, not just from a player's perspective. They also talked about what they're looking for in players when they're at an event like this. It's not just about talent. Energy and effort. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go on behalf of all the coaches out there and say those are the two things that we're not trying to coach uh, at our level. Uh, so kids that come in here, uh, they're excited, they're energetic, they're excited for their teammates, they love to be coached, uh, they work hard throughout the duration of the camp. Uh, that's typically what I look for first, and I know a lot of other coaches do as well. Uh, and then on top of that, I mean, players who can pass, dribble, and shoot. We try to keep it simple, uh, but the great players, we typically do all three. Is it easier to take a look at kids out here when there's no such thing as, you don't have a stat sheet, you don't have a stat line, you don't know how many points they're scoring, uh, you're, just, you're just going on talent and, and what you're seeing in person? Correct, and, and that's where the energy piece and effort piece really stands out even more so. Because uh, you can have a kid out here who might only score, uh, you know, two points, four points, but it's, it's something we can't necessarily go back and watch. Uh, so when it's, or in my opinion, when it comes to the eye test, uh, just being able to see a, a kid, whether it's a guy or a girl, see their energy and effort, that's what matters the most. That'll wrap up an edition here on Inside the Gym, coming to you in Brownsville, St. Joseph. I'm Joe Bowling in Brownsville, Texas, reminding you we've got additional programming coming your way 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right here on the Brownsville St. Joe channel. Also, join in on our network channels, such as the Rio Sports Live channel, the Harlingen channel, and other school districts that are joining on board. Till next time, from Inside the Gym on Brownsville St. Joe's channel, I'm Joe Bowling for Rio Sports Live. We'll see you soon. Sports Live, we're coming to you tonight from Brownsville, Texas, and we're at the home of the Fighting Bloodhounds. That means we're at St. Joe Academy. I'm Joe Bowling, my wife Dahlia on my right-hand side operating the camera tonight. Early kickoff on this Friday night. It's a 5 o'clock kickoff as Hyde Park. The Panthers are in town to take on the Bloodhounds. We go from pregame right into our game itself as the Bloodhounds are at home trying to uh, continue their hopes on uh, entertaining some postseason action. They'd like to get a victory here tonight over this Hyde Park Panther team. Panthers will be kicking off to start the game. They're going left to right. They're in the white uniforms and the red trim. The Bloodhounds on their home field in the red and the gray. Sit back and enjoy the action. We're right in the middle of the sun, right in the middle of the stands. And here we go with the opening kickoff of tonight's game. Short, wobbly, bouncing kick through the uh, Bloodhounds. That's a live football. They'll scoop it up at the 20, take it out across the 25 to the 30, 35, 40, and out to the 45-yard line. That's how it starts. On a return for the Bloodhounds is Adrian Del Pozo, and the junior nearly took that one all the way on the opening kickoff of the evening. Bloodhounds will be uh, on the field. Good field position to start this first drive. Put the ball down at their 46. 
Again, we're right here in the stands. You're going to have people walking into our camera angle. That'll happen occasionally. Not a lot we can do about that as far as elevating the camera much higher than what we are. We're in the top row, so we'll do the best we can. Bloodhounds on first down, first play from scrimmage, and they'll fumble the snap. Looking back now to throw the ball. That's batted down and incomplete. Reaching up and getting a hand on that was Corbin Herzog. Herzog able to uh, bat that one down on the incompleted pass by Cristiano for the uh, Bloodhounds. Luigi Cristiano had to uh, weave his way through the injury bug. He was playing several games, banged up. He's good to go. We'll get back into that. Quick swing pass, left-hand side. That's a completed pass. Down the sideline, still on his feet for the Bloodhounds is Santiago Alduri. And that's enough for a first down for St. Joseph Academy. As Luigi was going through all of his battles with injuries, they lost their primary tailback to a broken collarbone. But tonight, they get the services back of a tailback that they had in week one that went down with an injury against Santa Rosa. Cristiano looks to throw, rolls out to his right-hand side, buying some time, fires it incomplete. Looking for Lucas Cristiano, the sophomore wide receiver. Good blocking up front, though, by the Bloodhounds on the offensive line. Buying that extra time for Luigi Cristiano to uh, roll out for that incompleted pass. Second down and 10. We're just underway here in the first quarter of play from Brownsville. Home of the Bloodhounds of St. Joseph. Running play. First running play of the game for the uh, Bloodhounds. That goes for a couple yards. Going to bring up third down and call it 10 yards to go for St. Joe. Opening drive of the uh, ball game here. St. Joe has one first down during this drive. And on third and 10, they two have two receivers out to the right-hand side. Cristiano drops back, has time, now steps up, looks, delivers right side, and just misses his man. Again, looking for Lucas Cristiano. That would have been enough for a first down as he had separation between he and the defender, Noah Bassett. But now fourth down and 10 for the Bloodhounds. All right now they leave the offense on the field. Wind is blowing, but it's blowing across the field from the visiting side to straight across the field over here to the home side where we're stationed. It might affect the pass or two, but it'll be equal against the two quarterbacks. Cristiano on a fourth and 10, sets up a screen. Pass completed, now for some blocking, nothing doing. And the Panthers are able to turn it over on downs. As Spencer first is able to shut that one down after the completed pass to Adrian Del Pozo. And now the Panthers will send the offense onto the field for the first time this evening. Five o'clock kickoff here tonight at Brownsville St. Joseph. If you're watching on our social media, on our Facebook, please share the link. Like and follow our page, help to get the numbers up, but share the link to let other fans know these games are going on. Those of you on our YouTube channel, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It does assist us as well when we're talking about the advertising needed to uh, continue to fund what we're doing here on Rio Sports Live. First down for the Panthers. First time we'll see their offense. Man in motion goes left to right on a first down play. They'll run it to the right side and that goes nowhere. Will Garcia took the handoff and meeting him uh, immediately was Miguel Contreras. The junior linebacker was able to get right there with him and stop his forward progress before he got to the line of scrimmage. Loss of one brings up second and 11 for Hyde Park. Wide receiver out wide to the left-hand side for Hyde Park on this second down play. Man in motion again left to right. They'll fake the handoff to the motion man. Quarterback keeps it, drilled in the backfield and down he goes, a loss of three more. First guy there was Miguel Cortez, the junior defensive lineman for Brownsville St. Joseph. And this drive is going backwards for the Hyde Park Panthers. It brings up third down and now 14 and a half yards to go. Oh, 
on third down. Rolling out is Colin Peterson. Looking to throw, delivers the ball. That's going to be caught near first down yardage. It's going to be real close. And they will say it is just enough for a first down. Good pitch and catch that time for the Hyde Park Panthers. And they'll have a new set of downs here now in Bloodhound territory. Call it the 47-yard line of St. Joe Academy. Bloodhounds took the opening kickoff. Turned it over on downs, and now Hyde Park motion on the uh, front of the offensive line, and that'll be an easy five-yard penalty call for the officials to sort out. Still first down, call it 15. You can hear the wind blowing in the headset here. Shifting a little bit, but still coming straight across the field. A lot of motion up front by the uh, Bloodhounds. Hand off for the Panthers. Bounce it to the outside. Staying on his feet is Will Garcia. They'll string him out and then uh, shut him down. A lot of running that time for Garcia. A lot of Bloodhounds chasing him down. Among them was Santiago Valduri again. But he had plenty of assistance as the Bloodhounds were defensively in the right spot to shut that play off. Second down play here coming up for the Panthers of Hyde Park. This is homecoming for St. Joseph. They'll have the festivities during the halftime break. They had a parade before this game. Second down play on the read. Quarterback keeps it, drops back. What a pass, batted out of the air as Omar Duran, the senior, is able to bat that one down. Goes as an incomplete pass. Brings up third down. And on a third down and 15, we'll see if Hyde Park once again can dial up something here and earn four more downs on the play. Got to get it to the 37 of the Bloodhounds to get a first down if you're Hyde Park. On third down, man in motion, Drew Foster. Good snap, swing a pass out in the direction of the uh, receiver on a receiver screen. He'll fight forward, gain four, but that's well short of a first down. And it brings up fourth down for Hyde Park. Now when you flip the switch, St. Joe Academy had a similar situation in a fourth and 10 in their opponent's side of the 50 yard line, elected to go for it on fourth down. And it appears as though the Hyde Park Panthers will do the same here. First quarter action, we're scoreless. They will punt the ball after all. Wobbly kick to the sideline, that's literally into the wind, takes a good roll for the Panthers inside the 20 of the Bloodhounds, and that's where they'll take over. Bloodhounds offense on the field for the second time. We'll be right back with that drive after this. Teachers are driving the frontier of technology, bringing industry to the classroom. On and off the field, Brownsville ISD students engage in the experiences that make them college and career ready. Brownsville Independent School District, the best choice. And he throws it down. Back here on Real Sports Live, you can see the uh, two teams on the field. It's a bright, sunny sky to start this one with this five o'clock start. We'll see some play under the lights, but not much unless we go into some heavy overtime here this evening. All part of trying to get the uh, football game in ahead of the homecoming festivities. First down play, Cristiano hands it off, running play, and that goes for short yardage. Valdura was able to uh, take the handoff. Gain maybe a half a yard if they stretch that out. Second down and 10 for the Bloodhounds. 
Luigi Cristiano has it back in the backfield to his left-hand side, wants to throw, rolls out, waits, delivers now downfield. It's incomplete. Adrian Del Pozo was the intended receiver. Tried to climb the ladder to catch that high pass. Incomplete, brings up third down. We got lots of action coming your way. One of the bigger games is up in the Coastal Bend tonight on our broadcast. That's at Odom, where Hebronville undefeated takes on Odom undefeated. Anthony Martinez will have the call on that. Cristiano looks to throw, swings it up the middle. That's caught. That's a first down for the Bloodhounds. They'll move the chains as Francisco De La Garza makes the catch. Ball out to the 27-yard line of St. Joe Academy. Cristiano in a hurry-up offense now, takes a snap, rolls out right side, now turns it upfield, penalty flag on the play. That's a completed pass, and some yards after the catch for the Bloodhounds, and a bunch of them. If the play stands, it's six to the house for 74. We'll sort out the penalty. There were two flags thrown, one in the secondary of the Panthers, which is probably an illegal substitution or too many men on the field. Second penalty was thrown at the line of scrimmage. Here comes the call. It's against the Panthers. Decline it, and the Bloodhounds go up 6-0. Del Pozo on the catch, and then yards after the catch makes it 6-0. And for the extra point, Marcelo Masso, the kicker, is ready to go. Right-footed kicker, Nick Jackson is the holder. Couple of seniors on the tandem, trying for the extra point. Good snap, ball down, kick is up high, long, and it is good. St. Joe Academy at home on homecoming night. Leads this one 7-0, kickoff coming up. Panthers get the football after this on Real Sports Live. And Luke Fuya Motors, we're moving forward. Same great service, same great people, same great cars and trucks, and these great white events. Our vision is crystal clear. Look for your motors. We're on the move. We're the Lady Cougars and you're watching Real Sports Live. Plan your escape. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? SoPadre.com. We are the Highlander Lady Cardinals, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Back here on Real Sports Live in Brownsville, Texas, on a Friday night. Just one of many games going on this evening. It's that kind of year right now as volleyball playoffs are starting on Monday. We've got some position games and volleyball to uh, establish final standings and seedings for those teams that are in the playoffs. They'll be taking place tomorrow. Some of those taking place tonight. On Monday, we'll have our first basketball broadcast coming your way from Idea Westlaco Pike as they'll be taking on Lasara on the girls' side. Kickoff by the Bloodhounds. This is an onside kick. It's fielded by the Panthers. They'll get down on the football. Good heads up play that time by Sam Ballard. Ballard, once he got his hands on the ball, immediately went down. He had nothing but a wave of red jerseys clad in white trim coming right at him. He's like, no blockers here. I'm good. We're going to start this drive right here. Other broadcasts will be featuring an IDEA football regional matchup on Tuesday. We'll have a broadcast of that from IDEA North Mission. Again, we've got basketball action, volleyball action, football action, and then the, uh, the flag football for the idea schools. Running play, that goes nowhere, a big loss on the play. Bloodhounds make a play as Luis Bedola, the senior, is able to shut that one off. Loss of nine brings up second and 19 for Hyde Park.
Ball at their own 35-yard line. St. Joe Academy up 7-0 here with 5.25 and counting here in the first quarter. Second down and long. Man in motion left to right. Pass over the middle. That's caught. A lot of room on his horse as Augie Went. Went may take it all the way. They're trying to chase him down. They're not going to catch him. 56 yards later, touchdown. Augie Went caught that one on the run and raced through the secondary. We'll show you on the replay here. And too much speed as Went takes it for six. Looking for the extra point to tie this game up. High snap, they get the ball down, it's through the uprights and it's good. We are tied at seven apiece, each team with a touchdown and an extra point. Kickoff after this, Unreal Sports Live. A&M University, Kingsville. We are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. And he throws it down. I love what I do. I, I really love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. Back here at St. Joe Academy in Brownsville, Texas, the Fighting Bloodhounds. Jumped out on top, 7-0, and the Panthers of Hyde Park have responded with a touchdown. We're all knotted up at seven apiece here in the first quarter. It was a cool day to start the day. I was kind of looking forward to some cooler weather. Sitting out here in this hot sun, it is uh, one of those nights in which you're hoping it goes down below the tree line to cool it down here. Bouncing kickoff, that's fielded by the Bloodhounds, and they'll have it at their own 41 to start a drive. Coming up at halftime, again, they will be having the uh, halftime, the Queen Coronation here at Brownsville St. Joseph. Got a lot of tables set up down in the, the far end zone to our left side as we look at the field. Lots of activities here on a homecoming weekend for St. Joe. Cristiano looks to throw, has a man caught. Midfield stripe, spinning past a one tackler. That's a first down. Francisco De La Garza on the catch. It's good enough for a 12 yard gain and a first down for the uh, St. Joe Bloodhounds. Last time on the fields, the Bloodhounds were able to Connect on that big pass play over the middle this time. That one's caught. Big hit delivered, but that's a 10-yard gain. Lucas Cristiano on the catch. Nine Make it a nine-yard gain as they'll drop him down a yard short. So second and one, a lot of options here for the Bloodhounds. Luigi Cristiano is ready. Takes a snap, hands it off on a delay. And that play goes for maybe a half yard on complete second effort by Santiago Valdure. Fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage as he was hit a good three yards deep. Third down and one for the Bloodhounds. Cristiano to throw again, quick short pass, that's complete. Fighting for a first down is Nick Jackson. Jackson stays on his feet. They'll finally bowl the play dead. But that's plenty of yards gained for a first down for Brownsville St. Joseph. As the ball is down to the 35 of the Hyde Park Panthers. 
Cristiano before the next snap takes a look. Timeout called Timeout. by Hyde Park. Our score, 7-7. Seven, seven. We're in Brownsville. At Brownsville, St. Joseph. We'll be back with more after this. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? SoPadre.com. Service is attitude. How far are we willing to go to service our community, our dealership here for you, and you? Sky's the limit. And you're watching Real Sports Live. Josh Moody and Coach Rolly Gonzalez of Josh Moody Loans are former Harlingen Cardinals and would like to wish all the teams good luck in tonight's games. Back here, Josh Moody Loans, one of the uh, advertising sponsors here on Real Sports Live. Signed on last year about this time, and uh, we do appreciate everything Josh Moody Loans has done helping with uh, some of the tabs that we put out and our preview. Pass play for the Bloodhounds after the timeout. That's a catch made. That's Nick Martavino on the catch. Ends up gaining four yards on the play and second down for Brownsville St. Joseph. We're in the first quarter here. Each team with a tally with touchdowns to show on the scoreboard. Cristiano wants to throw, steps up, now he's gonna run, straight up the middle. Takes on a tackler, Cristiano drives for a good 20 yard gain. Watch on our replay here, and this is when a quarterback has some size, just takes on that safety. Down to the 13, back to live action. Cristiano swings a pass right hand side. That's caught by Lucas Cristiano. Wrapped up quickly, good coverage out there in the flats on the tackle made by Noah Bassett. Or Bassett in this case, Noah Bassett on the tackle. Cristiano staring up into the sunshine, looking into this end zone. Second down for the Bloodhounds, he'll roll out. Looking, delivering, that's caught, touchdown, Bloodhounds. Nick Jackson takes it in for the strike. Easy pickings that time for Brownsville St. Joseph. And they go back on top 13 to seven. Show you on the replay. Now they'll take the points off the board. As a result, a penalty on the play, so we're still tied at seven apiece. Cristiano on second down and now 21, 22 yards to go. Short pass delivered. Yards after the catch down the left sideline. De La Garza on the catch. Brings up third down and now 11. The Bloodhounds can still get a first down without getting in the end zone from this point of the field. Third down play, Cristiano drops back looking, middle of the field, tipped and incomplete. Off the hands of Nick Jackson. And now we've gone from a uh, score opportunity extra point to now fourth down and 11 yards to go for Brownsville St. Joseph. And the Panthers of Hyde Park have an opportunity here to make a big play on the defensive side. Cristiano is ready. Low snap, has time, waits, hesitates again, backpedals, lets it go, incomplete, missed his man. In the direction of Jackson, and that does turn the ball over on downs to Hyde Park. As a penalty, takes points off the board. 
away from Brownsville, St. Joseph. So your score remains seven apiece. Second time that Brownsville St. Joseph has turned it over on downs. This time much deeper in their opponent's territory as the Panthers have to start this drive from their own, call it 15 yard line. Chance now for St. Joe's defense to make some kind of big play here. On first down, man in motion left to right. They'll pass it out there on that left side, incomplete. Trying to get it in the hands of Bassett, but it's out of his hands, incomplete. Brings up second down and 10. Hyde Park with a football, up to the line. Two receivers left side, two backs now, well, one back in the backfield. Man in the slot, now a man in motion. And they'll hand it off, bouncing off one tackler, but two more are there to greeting. Will Garcia dropped after a short game. Quickly third down now for the Panthers of Hyde Park. Third and 10, two receivers left side. Colby Papadakos out there wide left. They'll look in his direction. Now let go of the pass. Papadakos can't track that one down incomplete. He and Noah Bassett had overloaded that left side. And so that is a quick, quick, quick three and out for Hyde Park and they'll have to punt. That means the punter will take the snap inside of his 10 yard line nearer the five. So good opportunity here for the Bloodhounds. Send a man back to return the punt. The kick is away, a good spiraling kick to the angle and out of bounds in Bloodhound territory. At the 48, they'll start to drive. We'll be right back with more after this. We are Santa Rosa and you're watching Real Sports Live. There is a feeling you get when you walk onto a campus. A sense of love, compassion, and dedication. An environment that inspires each of our HCISD family members to do their best and to be their best. We ground our education on strong character and together we will always persist towards the future. We are a district of choice a district of innovation, and a district of excellence. We are HCISD. Bloodhounds with a running play on first down to the right side. Stepping out of bounds after gaining 13 is Adrian Del Pozo. From the 42 of Hyde Park, the Bloodhounds will look to throw. Cristiano rolls out, now he swings a pass out there. He's got a man down the left sideline. This is Nick Jackson. Makes a man miss, Jackson to the house. Nifty move made by Nick Jackson after making the catch. And he's in the end zone for the touchdown. We made somebody famous there on the internet. <laughs> and it's 13 to seven. St. Joe on top. Extra point, Marcelo Masso, the senior. Looking to give St. Joseph the extra point. Good snap. Kick is away, and good. Kickoff coming up, we're still in the first quarter. Bloodhounds lead the Panthers. This is Real Sports Live. We are Eddie Bergella, and you're watching Real Sports Live. 
Sherryland ISD, a nationally recognized district focusing on quality and rigorous instruction where every child is immersed in a culture of academic success. A district dedicated to preparing our youth for the future. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower all students to reach their full potential and become leaders of the highest moral character. Sherryland ISD, excellence is our tradition. and you're watching Real Sports Live. Uniforms, etc. you're going to find the opportunity to purchase the best high-quality scrubs. Soon after, I learned about how the EDC was helping out uh, the community, and so I did meet with uh, Ms. Castillo. She made it very easy, very friendly, and she walked me every step of the way. I couldn't have done it without their help. Come visit our... Back here in St. Joe uh, at Brownsville, Texas. That touchdown pass was to Nick Jackson. Like I said, we're in the stands here, and so we had some fans that were getting some concessions taken care of. So trust me, Nick Jackson reeled that one in and scored on the kickoff, fielded and down quickly by Hyde Park. Sam Ballard again, the man on the spot to recover that. And here comes Hyde Park out on the field. Penalty on that return as well. They'll march Hyde Park back five yards. First down play for the Panthers, trailing the Bloodhounds 14 to seven. Quarterback on a read, fires a pass over the middle, caught, and here goes Augie Went again. Makes a man miss, he's gonna score. Second big touchdown of the day. One play drive. Yet again, as Augie Went has his second reception that goes for a score. And we're an extra point away from this one being tied up again. On the extra point, they went for a two and they won't get it. Bloodhounds lead, they'll get the football. Four seconds left in the first quarter, back after this with a kickoff. We have furniture, appliances, clothes, collectibles, and more. All funds collected support the Sunny Glen Children's Home. Come see us at Vintage on Jackson at First in Jackson in Harlingen. I love what I do. I, I really love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. Back here on Rio Sports Live as we have another kickoff here in the first quarter. Each team with a couple of scores. The difference maker, the extra point by St. Joe's Bloodhounds. And they lead this one 14 to 13, and they'll get the ball here. On the kickoff. That conversion, as you saw, was not by design for two points. And now we're ready for the kickoff. Bloodhounds send two men back to return this kick. 
This one takes a high bounce, fielded by St. Joseph at the 45, and that's where they'll take over. Enrique Sanchez able to get his hands on the ball. And we continue in this back and forth affair between Brownsville, St. Joseph, and Hyde Park. Share the link if you're watching on our social media, those on uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe to the uh, channel, if you will. On our Facebook, share the link. Like and follow our page, if you will. Penalty flag on that kickoff as well. Tax on more yardage against Hyde Park. And so St. Joe's Bloodhounds will have it right at the midfield stripe to start this drive, leading by one. Cristiano is ready. Takes a snap, throws the ball, that's caught. In the secondary, this may go to the house. Adrian Del Pozo to the six. Show you on the replay here to close out the first quarter. And the Bloodhounds will have it first and goal when we start the second quarter. Long trip for the two teams. We'll be right back after this. This game is brought to you in part by the concession stand in Santa Rosa, a locally owned business providing a terrific atmosphere before or after the games and supporting athletes of all ages. When you're in Santa Rosa, be sure to stop by the concession stand and choose from the wide assortment of goodies. An advertising partner with Rio Sports Live is the concession stand. Music lovers, you have to stop and see the assortment of records, tapes, and records memorabilia at Forever Memories today. Located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, Texas, there's over 10,000 records on display and more coming every day. Looking for your favorite album from the past? First pressings, collectibles, how about a 45 with a single you just have to have? Freddie Fender, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, Elvis, Beatles, Blues, Rock, Classics, Tejano, it's all here. Organized and priced for you, Forever Memories, 237 North Sam Houston, San Benito. We are La Villa, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Whether you're back here on Real Sports Live, and welcome to the second quarter here in Brownsville. The Fighting Bloodhounds knocking on the door with a first and goal. Leading 14-13, Cristiano wants to throw. Pressured, steps up, got some room, takes on a tackler, dies forward, he's in, touchdown! Luigi Cristiano from nine yards out. And much like we saw earlier, Cristiano more than willing to take on a tackler. Watch on the right side of your screen here as they line up for the extra point. This is Cristiano actually taking a look. There's a safety. Let me just drag through him. And scores. Extra point coming up. Kick is away, long high, and good. St. Joe leads this one 21-13. We're just underway in the second quarter. Panthers get the football after this. Island. Be sure to book your place to stay with Island Services. Locally owned for over 40 years. Trusted, reliable for condo and beach house rentals. Call and visit the website today, Island Services. Hi, I'm Roto Vegas and I'm a partner with New York Life Insurance Company. For 170 years, New York Life has built a reputation for building some of the finest agents in the industry. I help to manage that process from day one. If you're looking to challenge yourself and build an insurance and financial service business, then I would like to show you how I can help. Back here, and uh, we're ready to go with a kickoff. We've had plenty of those in our books already. Five touchdowns between the two teams and a quarter and seven seconds. As Brownsville St. Joe tees it up. See some shadows uh, starting to creep across the field. That sun, though, is still going to be in play for at least another hour and a half. We'll play some of this game under some lighted conditions other than the bright sun. 
High bouncing kick. That's a live football, but it bounced out of bounds. So neither team wanting to kick the ball deep on these kickoffs at all. Hyde Park could make them re-kick it, or they could just bring the offense on the field. That's what they'll do. They'll take the five-yard penalty. Marked off and all the way out to the 47-yard line of the Panthers. With the exception of one drive in which Hyde Park had to start it deep in their own territory, most of the drives have been uh, out or around the midfield area for either team. First down play for the Panthers. Quarterback on a read, keeps it, runs right side, stretches forward, gained eight. Good read that time by Peterson. Colin Peterson brought down in St. Joe territory at the 45 yard line of the Bloodhounds. Second down and two. For the Panthers, wide receiver right side is Augie Wynn. Got to watch where he's at at all times. He's got two long touchdown passes. Running play right side. Close to first down yardage is Will Garcia. He got to the, the marker. Although he got close on the forward progress. Appears to be about a half yard short. Players shaking up on the field as well. That's Garcia. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with more after this. The Texas A&M Kingsville. Somos una familia. Nosotros nos apoyamos. Trabajamos juntos. Crecemos juntos. Triunfamos juntos. Nos inspiramos los unos a los otros para convertirnos en las grandes mentes del futuro. Estamos aquí para asegurarnos que tú triunfes. Aplica hoy para empezar. Es tu momento. Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles, located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, is filled with vintage items, collectibles, and a selection of vinyl records that's as good as it gets. Every shelf, every aisle, and table is filled daily by a number of vendors that ensures that something here just might be the item you have to have. The vinyl record area helps bring an added atmosphere that makes for the fun trip when stepping back in time with the memories. Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles in San Benito. The Brownsville Independent School District continues to provide a... Back here after the uh, injury, Will Garcia able to walk off under his own power. So for fans rooting for the Panthers, hopefully he'll be able to return healthy and intact and ready to resume action. Third down play coming up as they'll mark him down about a yard short of the first down. It's third and one for the Panthers. Long count, handoff right side, that's a first down, down to around the 40 yard line. Drew Foster on the carry, easy a pickup of the first down. So the sticks moved up further downfield into Bloodhound territory for this Panther team. Colin Peterson, the quarterback, is ready. On first and 10, Peterson hands it off. Bounce it left side. Five-yard gain. Right back in the hands of Drew Foster. Hit first by Nick Jackson. Also there to help out on the tackle, Luis Bedola for Brownsville St. Joseph. We're in the second quarter of play, reminding you that they have homecoming festivities. We'll keep the camera rolling on the homecoming during the halftime break. Also, we'll have some halftime highlights and more. Second down play, handoff, and this is Foster. 
Foster dropped, did not gain a yard, got back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Third down and five coming up for Hyde Park. Out to the right side is Augie Wynn. Joining him out there is Jackson Whitcomb. Colin Peterson, the quarterback, on third down. Looking right, now looking over the middle. Here's pressure, down he goes. A sack is made. Miguel Cortez was there and Omar Duran was there as well. And just no time for Peterson to look downfield. Brings up fourth down and now call it 12 and a half. Peterson lines up. Twin receivers right, back deep in the backfield behind him. They'll go for the punt instead. Looking to uh, angle that one to the sideline. It takes a good bounce. Out of bounds for the Panthers. And we'll see how far down they mark that. All the way down around the five yard line is where Brownsville St. Joseph will start the drive. Talked about some great field position to start drives for each of these teams. Panthers had to start a drive this far back in their own territory once. Now the Bloodhounds do. As first down from their own five. Luigi Cristiano. Takes a look, if one of those receivers breaks it now, that's gonna be a huge play. Looks to throw, over the middle, that's caught. And to the right side, and this just might go for 95 yards. Adrian Del Pozo. Can I say I told you so? 95 yard touchdown strike for the Bloodhounds. One play drive. Bloodhounds up a couple of scores looking for the extra point. Marcelo Masso has been a busy guy. Pressure up the middle, he gets the kick away. It is good. Bloodhounds lead this one 28-13. Kickoff coming up after this. Education from pre-K-3 to early college high school, the award-winning district has advanced its legacy in curriculum, athletics, and fine arts. Teachers are driving the frontier of technology, bringing industry to the classroom. On and off the field, Brownsville ISD students engage in the experiences that make them college and career ready. Brownsville Independent School District, the best choice. And he throws it down. See you later, touchdown. Loop for your motors, we're moving forward. Same great service, same great people, same great cars and trucks, and these great white events. Our vision is crystal clear. Loop for your motors, we're on the move. Look for your motors, just one of our sponsors here on Rio Sports Live, just down the street here in Brownsville. We have our Luke Fruya talking sports on a Wednesday show. On Wednesday, this last week, we went on the road, had it in Edinburgh, but Luke Fruya Motors, just one of our proud sponsors here on Rio Sports, assisting us in bringing you coverage of all the teams that we are able to cover on a daily basis. We're in the second quarter here with Brownsville St. Joseph now on top by the score of 28 to 13, kicking off. They haven't seen any deep kicks by either team. 
until now. That's a booming kick into the end zone. And so the Panthers will bring the offense on the field, trailing 28 to 13. This St. Joe team. Lots of games coming up later on tonight. From here to Odom, to Telesso Midway, and many points in between here on Rio Sports Live. Ball at the 25 yard line for the Hyde Park Panthers. Colin Peterson is ready on a first down. High snap, he'll take it, hand it off, bounce it right side. That'll gain a couple of yards. Bill Garcia back in the game, uh, the ball carrier. He had left earlier after an injury. Gains a couple, second down. And call it seven yards to go for Colin Peterson. Peterson takes it again on a read. Going to throw on a play action. Delivers the ball over the middle of the field. Tipped away. Nearly picked off incomplete. Take a look at this play downfield. And an incomplete pass. My wife Dalia on the camera cringed when I went to the replay. Did a good job of catching that one. She's no amateur. She's been here before. It's just been a while. Third down and seven. Peterson rolls right. Here comes pressure. Hit as he throws. That's underthrown incomplete. Pressure delivered as... For the Bloodhounds, Luis Bedola was able to hit the quarterback. Right as he was throwing the ball. Fourth down coming up for Hyde Park. Adrian Del Pozo back to return the punt for Brownsville St. Joseph. Corbin Herzog in punt formation for the Panthers. Good snap. Herzog gets the kick away, away from the return man to the right sideline. Picked up now, and here's Del Pozo. Makes a man miss, makes another miss. Brought down to the 48, and that's where the Bloodhounds will take over. Leading 28-13 here on a homecoming week for Brownsville St. Joseph. Crowd continues to file in as well. There's a Big bunch down there in that far end zone. I realize why now. It's all shade down there. They may come over here for the homecoming coronation. Right now they are tucked away in the shade. They can see the action. And I know there's the food over there as well. Not a bad place to be. First down for the Bloodhounds. High snap. Cristiano hands the ball off, and that running play Gains a couple of yards. Still on his feet as Vandure to the sideline, and he'll gain 13. Vildari will just absolute second effort. Able to turn that into a first down play, and a new set of downs awarded on the carry. Cristiano ready on first down. Throws over the middle. That's caught in stride. Lucas Cristiano gets a block to the sideline. He's in. Touchdown, Bloodhounds. Hold your horses. There's a penalty back around the spot where the final block was thrown. Let's go to the replay on the right side of your screen. Well, let's go to the big screen here. 
Watch as the blocking develops here. Right there. I'm not sure anything happened there, but that's where the penalty was thrown. And that will take the touchdown away. Now mark off a 15 yard penalty. Back out to the 25 yard line of the Hyde Park Panthers. First down nonetheless for Brownsville St. Joseph. Ball down at the 25. For Luigi Cristiano. Looks left, now looks right. That's caught, and here comes Cristiano again. Upended, down he goes at the 15. That's good enough for a 10 yard gain. Another first down. Luigi to Lucas as the Cristianos attack. Luigi ready to go. First down play. Looking around the six yard line. Is that caught? No, incomplete. Looking for Francisco De La Garza. Just a bit underthrown. It brings up second and 10. Clap stops with 6.06 remaining here in the first half of play. St. Joseph with a 15 point lead. A big a score here would be. Big heading into the halftime locker room to go up the three scores. If you're St. Joe, Cristiano rolling right all the way, looking, delivers, overthrown, incomplete. Cristiano took a hit that time as he delivered the pass. Spencer first was right there. Overshot Adrian Del Pozo, and it brings up third down. And 10 yards to go for Brownsville St. Joseph. Luigi Cristiano is ready. Good snap, drops back, has a ton of time. Now pressured a little bit, rolls out, directs some traffic. Waiting, delivers a ball back of the end zone. It is incomplete. Adrian Del Pozo trying to bring that one down in traffic. You go back though, Cristiano had just a ton of time. Now we got a penalty flag on the play as well. Ineligible receiver downfield called against Brownsville St. Joseph. Choice there is it's either third and 15 if you take the penalty, or in this case, they decline the penalty. So it's fourth down, 10 yards to go for Brownsville St. Joseph. Offense stays on the field. A Couple of times this Hyde Park Panther team has come up big and made a stop on a fourth down play. Looking for another one here, Cristiano. Pressured, rolls out, delivers, and it's incomplete. Another turnover on downs. Bloodhounds come up a bit short. Hyde Park will get the football after this. Plan your escape. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? Sopadre.com. We are the Highlands and Lady Cardinals. Whistle blows. The teams will make their way on the field. The Bloodhounds of St. Joseph already there. And here come the Hyde Park Panthers. Panthers defense makes another stop. Gives the offense a little bit of life here. Looking further down the line. Start the second half. Panthers will get the ball to start the third quarter. Pressure coming and an underthrown ball incomplete. As again, Colin Peterson felt the heat. Trying to get that pass off. 
Massa was there first. Brings up second and 10. For Hyde Park. Ball at the 14 yard line. For the Hyde Park Panthers. Peterson gonna keep it. Got five, it brings up third down. So Brownsville St. Joseph, their defense can make one of those stops as well here. Try to get the offense back on the field. Still five minutes and some chains left here in this first half of play. Ball at the 20, got to get to the 25 for a first down if you're a Panther fan. Peterson rolling out, drops back, delivers. That's going to be incomplete. Looking at Henry Gravitt, the intended receiver. It's behind him a little bit, and so it brings up fourth down and a punting situation for this Hyde Park Panther team. On the exchange, Brownsville St. Joseph should get good field position on this. Adrian Del Pozo goes back. Stands at the midfield stripe, waits for the kick. It's a wobbly short kick. Takes a bounce for the Panthers, but stays in Panther territory outside the 45, right about the 46. And that is where Brownsville St. Joseph will bring the offense back out. Friday night closing out the month of October. Wishing an early happy Halloween to everyone, celebrating that. In a couple of days. First down for the Bloodhounds. Cristiano, empty backfield. Swings a quick pass out to Nick Jackson. Jackson is going to be covered, and down he goes. Jackson wanted to throw the ball again as that was a design play, but Lucas Cristiano was defended downfield. So they'll take the loss on the play all the way back to their own 45-yard line for Brownsville St. Joseph. Cristiano delivers this one. That's caught. Back in uh, Panther territory. Some extra yardage now as Francisco de la Garza is able to gain about 13. Third down for Brownsville St. Joe. Ball at the Hyde Park, 42 for Cristiano. Quick snap, rolls out right side. Waiting, that's underthrown incomplete. Cristiano would like to get that one back. That one kind of slipped out of his hands. So fourth down yet again. Clock stops with 3.29 to go in the half. Luigi Cristiano. For Brownsville, St. Joseph. Nick Jackson, Lucas Cristiano out to the right side before the next snap will have a timeout. Bloodhounds want to talk it over. They lead it by 15. They're at home and homecoming week. They'll have a fourth down play after this. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. And he throws it down. Hey! See you later, touchdown. 
I love what I do. I, I really do. I love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. After the timeout, it's fourth down and six yards for the Bloodhounds of uh, Brownsville St. Joseph. Five coverage coming your way in Brownsville, Texas, home of the uh, Bloodhounds here on Rio Sports Live on a Friday night. Early kickoff, five o'clock start. We're an hour in. St. Joe on top, 28 to 13, forcing or facing here a fourth and six. You get it to the Make it the 35-yard line. You get a first down. Cristiano rolling right, looking that way all the way. Delivers over his man, incomplete. And another turnover on downs will give the ball back to Hyde Park's Panthers. Now the Panthers... Looking with a, a realistic chance here of scoring and then getting the ball to start the third quarter with a chance of evening this thing back up. Down by 15 right now. I know that's a lot of what ifs, but certainly in position. Starting a drive at their own 42 yard line with 322 left in the first half. Colin Peterson to direct the show. Penalty flags before that play develops. Bassett was in motion, but it looked like someone moved on the line as well. So it'll be a five-yarder marched off against this Panther team. Still first down, but now first and 15. They lost a second on the clock on that play. First and 15. Peterson. Hands it off to the motion man. This is Bassett. Bassett gets it out to the 45 yard line. That's a nine yard gain. Second down, he stayed in bounds. The clock will run. We'll go under three minutes left here in the first half. Timeouts left, the Panthers have two, Bloodhounds have two remaining as well. Still here in this first half. Bassett in motion, they'll hand it off to the back, tries to drag a man, nothing doing. Garcia, the ball carrier. Miguel Contreras was able to get his hands on him and wouldn't let him go until he fell. So a third down play coming up. They don't convert here. You may see uh, St. Joseph use one of their two remaining timeouts here. Leading by 15. Third down and six yards to go. Peterson looks at the sideline. They'll have to use a timeout. 151 left in the first half. Panthers of Hyde Park facing third and six. Bloodhounds of St. Joe leading this one. 28-13. This is Real Sports Live. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? Sopadre.com. Service is attitude. How far are we willing to go to service our community, our dealership here at Fruya, and you? Sky's the limit. And you're watching Real Sports Live. 
Josh Moody and Coach Rolly Gonzalez of Josh Moody Loans are former Harlingen Cardinals and would like to wish all the teams good luck in tonight's games. Back here at Rio Sports Live, the fourth down play. A running play, stretching out to the midfield stripe. That's on third down. Still fourth down. Two yards to go for Hyde Park. They'll keep the offense on the field on this fourth down play. Hard count for Peterson. Trying to draw him off sides, nothing doing. Play clock down to seven. And a timeout called <laughs> by the Panthers. They'll face fourth and two, punt or go for it with a minute three left. Back with more right after this. We are Santa Rosa and you're watching Real Sports Live. There is a feeling you get when you walk onto a campus. A sense of love, compassion, and dedication. An environment that inspires each of our HCISD family members to do their best and to be their best. We ground our education on strong character and together we will always persist towards the future. We are a district of choice. A district of innovation and a district of... Here we go. Fourth down play for the Panthers. They'll go for it. Running play. First down. Inside the 45 of the Bloodhounds. On the carry by Drew Foster. So first down play for Colin Peterson. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Peterson rolls out right side. Gets a block, delivers a pass, it's dropped. Tried to get it back in the hands of Augie Wint. Wint has a couple of uh, long touchdown plays here in this game. Both touchdowns as a result of receiving by Augie Wint and then uh, lots of yards after the catch. Second down and 10 for Hyde Park. Peterson delivers this one down the field. Got him again. Another touchdown. Augie went for a third time. Touchdown, 34 seconds left in the half. Hyde Park on the board again. And Peterson and Wint are having some kind of night here in the first half. At Brownsville, St. Joseph. Extra point, kickers Cor Corbin Herzog. Get the ball down, he booms the kick through, and it is good. Eight-point game. Bloodhounds lead. Kickoff right after this. HCISD. We are Eddie Bergbella, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Sherryland ISD, a nationally recognized district focusing on quality and rigorous instruction where every child is immersed in a culture of academic success. A district dedicated to preparing our youth for the future. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower all students to reach their full potential and become leaders of the highest moral character. Sherryland ISD, excellence is our tradition. We are and you're watching Real Sports Live. We are back here in uh, Brownsville on homecoming week for Brownsville St. Joseph. Bloodhounds on the high side of a 28 to 20 score. Against Hyde Park here as we're closing out the first half of play. Hyde Park Panthers connecting on a third touchdown pass. 
of the evening from Colin Patterson to Augie Wendt. And we'll tee it up and kick it off. I have been kicking a lot of short stuff. They indeed may be going for something short here as well. Down by eight. It's off of Bloodhound, fielded at the 44. That's where they'll have it. Two timeouts remaining for Brownsville St. Joseph. Luigi Cristiano and company back on the field now. Talk about big play capabilities. They have a 95-yard touchdown pass already accomplished here this evening. So with 34 ticks left and a couple of timeouts, it's certainly options for Brownsville St. Joe to try to score yet again to close out this half. Cristiano rolls out, looks to throw, steps up, delivers, that's caught. This is Lucas Cristiano, brought down around the 40-yard line. A stop play long enough to move the chains for Brownsville St. Joseph. And now the uh, Bloodhounds will take a timeout. Leading 28 to 20 here. Reminding you to have time, I'll have a highlight reel of uh, some of the bigger plays of the first half. Try to run down our lineup of additional games that are coming your way here this evening as well. Bloodhounds after taking that timeout. Race the offense back on the field, the official has to give time for Hyde Park to at least reset the defense and go through the timeout period. And now we're ready. As Luigi Cristiano has a first and 10 at the Hyde Park 41. Cristiano ready. Rolls out, looks. Just throws it away out of bounds on the sideline. Lost a couple of seconds on the play. 19 left. One timeout remaining for Brownsville St. Joseph. And second and 10. Louisiana passed the ball, that's dropped. Del Pozo was right there. So Brownsville St. Joe. We'll have another play here. Cristiano drops back. Short pass, this is caught. And on the run is Adrian Del Pozo. Got to the left sideline. Gets to the 10. Still on his feet, he's gonna score to close out the half. Adrian Del Pozo. And watch on the replay. Watch him use his blocker right there first. Use it again and then again. And now with a cutback and then change of speed for the score. St. Joe on top, 34-20. Looking for an extra point. Brownsville St. Joseph has to call a timeout. 
We'll keep it right here until we go for the extra point. Then we'll take us into the halftime break. Fourteen point lead for St. Joseph. Once again, Hyde Park will get the ball to start the second half. So a 34 second drive for Brownsville St. Joseph. Results in a touchdown. Puts him back up by a couple of scores. After the timeout, the extra point attempt. Kick away. Sales right, no good. Welcome to halftime. 20 or 34 to 20. Brownsville St. Joseph on top here. Halftime festivities will include the uh, homecoming coronation. We'll take a break, come back with uh, highlights of the first half, and we'll have that coronation for you as well. This is Real Sports Live. Opportunity to purchase the best high quality scrubs. Soon after I learned about how the EDC was helping out uh, the community, and so I did meet with uh, Ms. Castillo. She made it very easy, very friendly, and she walked me every step of the way. I couldn't have done it without their help. Come visit our new store in downtown Harlingen. We have furniture, appliances, clothes, collectibles, and more. All funds collected support the Sunny Glen Children's Home. Come see us at Vintage on Jackson at first in Jackson and Harlingen. I love what I do. I, I really love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. This game is brought to you in part by the concession stand in Santa Rosa, a locally owned business providing a terrific atmosphere before or after the games and supporting athletes of all ages. When you're in Santa Rosa, be sure to stop by the concession stand and choose from the wide assortment of goodies. An advertising partner with Rio Sports Live is the concession stand. Music lovers, you have to stop and see the assortment of records, tapes, and records memorabilia at Forever Memories today. Located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, Texas, there's over 10,000 records on display and more coming every day. Looking for your favorite album from the past? First pressings, collectibles. How about a 45 with a single you just have to have? Freddie Fender, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, Elvis, Beatles, Blues, Rock, Classics, Tejano, it's all here. Organized. And Back here, we're at halftime. We'll try to hand it over to the public address announcer for the halftime facilities here at St. Joe Academy. Thank you. 
Sánchez is Emma Ruiz. She is the daughter of Alvela Ardo Ruiz, Aime Lopez de Ruiz. She is a student council representative, a member of the cheer squad, PPLT, green team, tennis team, and a bloodhound ambassador. Escorting Emma is freshman Alejandro Puig, son of Mr. Sergio Puig and Mrs. Ana Garza de Puig. Next is our 10th grade judges, Katie Nakera. She is the daughter of Stephen and Amy Nakera. She is a member of the varsity volleyball team, Active Minds, Model UN, Civic Engagement, Green Team, Photography Club, National Science Honor Society, President of National Junior Honor Society, a student council representative, and a Bloodhound Ambassador. Escorting Katie is Jorge Alvarez, son of Jorge Alvarez and Anabel Aldrete de Alvarez. Now, introducing our 11th grade judges, Miranda Villafranca. She is the daughter of Julio Villafranca and Lisbeth Rodriguez de Villafranca. She is a member of the Sweethearts, Mayor's Youth, Civic Engagement, Active Minds, a Student Council Representative, Book Club, Rotary Interact, Fishing Club, French Honor Society, and Science Honor Society. Escorting Miranda is Jacobo Coronado, son of Pedro Luis Coronado and Carla Garcia de Coronado. Our 12th grade Duchess is Ana Paula Gonzalez. She is the daughter of Gerardo and Elsa Gonzalez. Ana Paula is a member of the track and field and cross country team, a student council representative, and the secretary for the Spanish National Honor Society. Escorting Ana Paula is Eduardo Varela, son of Rafael and Julia Varela. Now entering the field, is our 2021 homecoming princess, Miss Andrea Arellano. She is the daughter of Frank and Claudia Arellano. Andrea is the captain of the Sweethearts dance team, president of the Science Honor Society and French Honor Society. Outside of St. Joe, she is a dance teacher at Dance Infinity Dance School. Escorting Andrea is Alvaro Garza, son of Álvaro Garza and Cynthia de Garza. It is with pleasure that I introduce to you our 2021 homecoming queen, Ms. Regina Yañez. Regina is a member of the Sweethearts Dance Team, Mayor's Youth, Green Team, National Honor Society, and Spanish Honor Society. Outside of St. Joe, she is an active member of ESEAD. Escorting Regina is Mr. Pedro Cárdenas, son of Mr. Pedro Cárdenas and Ms. Lourdes Volado de Cárdenas. So there you have it, the uh, homecoming uh, queen uh, for 2021 here at Brownsville St. Joseph. We'll take a break and we come back. We'll give you the first half highlights of this one. 34-20, St. Joseph leads at the halftime break. Homecoming at St. Joseph. More after this. 37 North Sam Houston, San Benito. We are La Villa and you're watching Real Sports Live. Whether you're visiting or vacationing at South Padre Island, be sure to book your place to stay with Island Services. Locally owned for over 40 years. Trusted, reliable. For condo and beach house rentals, call and visit the website today. Island Services. We are the Cardinals and you're watching Real Sports Live. Hi, I'm Rodel Vegas and I'm a partner with New York Life Insurance Company. 
For 170 years, New York Life has built a reputation for building some of the finest agents in the industry. I hope to manage that process from day one. If you're looking to challenge yourself and build an insurance and financial service business, then I would like to show you how I can help. Aquí, en la Universidad de Texas A&M Kingsville. Somos una familia. Nosotros nos apoyamos. Trabajamos juntos. Crecemos juntos. Triunfamos juntos. Nos inspiramos los unos a los otros. Para convertirnos en las grandes mentes del futuro. Estamos aquí para asegurarnos que tú triunfes. Aplica hoy para empezar. Es tu momento. Back here at halftime, our score 34-20. Here's some first half highlights. This is how we got to our current score. Plan your escape. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. So why wait? Sopadre.com. Wobbly bouncing kick through the uh, bloodhounds. That's a live football. They'll scoop it up at the 20, take it out across the 25 to the 30, 35, 40, and out to the 45-yard line. That's how it starts. Wide receiver out wide to the left-hand side for Hyde Park on this second down play. Man in motion again left to right. They'll fake the handoff to the motion man. Quarterback keeps it. Drilled in the backfield and down he goes. A loss of three more. Where Hebronville undefeated takes on Odom undefeated. Anthony Martinez will have the call on that. Cristiano looks to throw. Swings it up the middle. That's caught. That's a first down for the Bloodhounds. They'll move the change as Francisco De La Garza makes the catch. Now turns it upfield, penalty flag on the play. That's a completed pass. And some yards after the catch for the Bloodhounds, and a bunch of them. If the play stands, it's six to the house for 74. We'll sort out the penalty. Pass over the middle. That's caught. A lot of room on his horse as Augie Went. Went may take it all the way. They're trying to chase him down. They're not going to catch him. 56 yards later, touchdown. Joe on the scoreboard. Cristiano wants to throw, steps up, now he's gonna run. Straight up the middle, takes on a tackler. Cristiano drives for a good 20 yard gain. Second down for the Bloodhounds, he'll roll out. Looking, delivering, that's caught, touchdown Bloodhounds. Nick Jackson. Cristiano rolls out, now he swings a pass out there. He's got a man down the left sideline. This is Nick Jackson, makes a man miss. Jackson to the house. Trailing the Bloodhounds 14 to seven. Quarterback on a read, fires a pass over the middle, caught, and here goes Augie Went again. Makes a man miss, he's gonna score. Second big touchdown of the day. Takes a snap, throws the ball, that's caught. In the secondary, this may go to the house. Adrian Del Pozo to the six. Oh. Leading 14-13, Cristiano wants to throw. Pressured, steps up, got some room. Takes on a tackler, dies forward, he's in, touchdown. Jackson Whitcomb, Colin Peterson, the quarterback, on third down. Looking right now, looking over the middle. Here's pressure, down he goes. A sack is made. Breaks it now. That's going to be a huge play. Looks to throw over the middle. That's caught. And to the right side, and this just might go for 95 yards. And to the right side, and this just might go for 95 yards. Adrian Del Pozo. In on a read, gonna throw on a play action. Delivers the ball over the middle of the field, tipped away. Nearly picked off, incomplete. Cristiano ready on first down. Throws over the middle, that's caught in stride. Lucas Cristiano. Gets a block to the sideline. He's in. Touchdown, Bloodhounds. Second down and 10 for Hyde Park. Peterson delivers this one down the field. Got him again. Another touchdown. Augie went for a third time. Have another play here. Cristiano drops back. Short pass. This is caught. And on the run is Adrian Del Pozo. Got to the left sideline. Gets to the 10, still on his feet. He's gonna score to close out the half. Plan your escape, beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily, so why wait? Sopadre.com. Wobbly back. 
And that's your first half highlights. Our score, 34 to 20. Neither team has returned back to the field. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get you set for the second half from St. Joe, where the Bloodhounds lead this one on Rio Sports Live. Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles, located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, is filled with vintage items, collectibles, and a selection of vinyl records that's as good as it gets. Every shelf, every aisle, and table is filled daily by a number of vendors that ensures that something here just might be the item you have to have. The vinyl record area helps bring an added atmosphere that makes for the fun trip when stepping back in time with the memories. Forever Memories, Antiques and Collectibles in San Benito. The Brownsville Independent School District continues to provide a safe environment for enriching education. From pre-K-3 to early college high school, the award-winning district has advanced its... It's homecoming festivities. They continue here at Brownsville St. Joseph. More after this. Athletics and fine arts. Teachers are driving the frontier of technology, bringing industry to the classroom. On and off the field, Brownsville ISD students engage in the experiences that make them college and career ready. Brownsville Independent School District, the best choice. And he throws it down. Loop for your motors, we're moving forward. Same great service, same great people, same great cars and trucks, and these great white events. Our vision is crystal clear. Loop for your motors, we're on the move. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? Sopadre.com. We are the Highlander Lady Cardinals and you're watching Real Sports Live. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. And he throws it down. Hey! See you later, touchdown. 
I love what I do. I, I really do. I love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. Plan your escape. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? Sopadre.com. Service is attitude. How far are we willing to go to service our community, our dealership here at Fruya, and you? Sky's the limit. Back here, we're at halftime on Rio Sports Live as we are uh, rolling into the uh, final portion of this halftime break. Brownsville St. Joseph on top in this one, 34-20. Other games tonight, Coffers at Lavia. that's a 7.30 kickoff. Hidalgo at Laferia, Marco Munguia will have the call there. He's right now in some traffic. There's an accident on Highway 77, so he may be a little late on that one, but we do have the broadcast of Hidalgo and Laferia. Victoria West at C.C. Carroll at Cabinus. Skidmore at Santa Rosa. Hebronville at Odom. That's already going on with homecoming festivities there. That's two undefeateds going against each other. Hebronville taking on Odin. Other games tonight, Los Fresnos at Brownsville, Hannah. Wessico at Harlingen South. Significant to those two games as they're going on at 7 o'clock. They're just getting underway about 15 minutes from now. Should Harlingen South and Los Fresnos both win? Then next Friday night at Los Fresnos, that'll be for the outright district title between South and Los Fresnos. Hannah and Wessico both standing in the way of that game uh, having that kind of a meaning. Other broadcasts tonight, Ingleside at Raymondville, Valley View at Sherryland, PSJA at Edinburgh North, and Monte Alto travels to Taft. We could have had other games, my friends. I think I've got seven systems that are not working tonight. If we had dedicated play-by-play -play individuals and camera operators that would be available to get to games. And when we're usually looking for individuals to take systems, we're looking for those that are uh, just as interested in covering the other sports, the volleyball, the basketball, the soccer. But we do have systems available. Play-by-play -play individuals and camera operators are needed, both in the Coastal Bin and in the RGV. First half highlights, let's run them one more time, and then we'll get you set for the second half. This is Real Sports Live. Plan your escape. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. So why wait? Sopadre.com. Wobbly bouncing kick through the uh, bloodhounds. That's a live football. They'll scoop it up at the 20, take it out across the 25 to the 30, 35, 40, and out to the 45-yard line. That's how it starts. Wide receiver out wide to the left-hand side for Hyde Park on this second down play. Man in motion again left to right. They'll fake the hand off to the motion man. Quarterback keeps it. Drilled in the backfield and down he goes. A loss of three more. Where Hebronville undefeated takes on Odom undefeated. Anthony Martinez will have the call on that. Cristiano looks to throw. Swings it up the middle. That's caught. That's a first down for the Bloodhounds. They'll move the chains as Francisco de la Garza makes the catch. Now turns it upfield, penalty flag on the play. That's a completed pass. And some yards after the catch for the Bloodhounds, and a bunch of them. If the play stands, it's six to the house for 74. We'll sort out the penalty. Pass over the middle, that's caught. A lot of room on his horse as Augie Went. Went may take it all the way. They're trying to chase him down. They're not gonna catch him. 56 yards later, touchdown. Joe on the scoreboard. Cristiano wants to throw, steps up, now he's going to run. Straight up the middle, takes on a tackler. Cristiano drives for a good 20-yard gain. Second down for the Bloodhounds. He'll roll out, looking, delivering. That's caught, touchdown, Bloodhounds. Nick Jackson. Cristiano rolls out, now he swings a pass out there. He's got a man down the left sideline. This is Nick Jackson. Makes a man miss, Jackson to the house. Trailing the Bloodhounds 14-7. Quarterback on a read, fires a pass over the middle, caught, and here goes Augie Went again. Makes a man miss, he's gonna score. Second big touchdown of the day. Takes a snap, 
Throws the ball, that's caught. In the secondary, this may go to the house. Adrian Del Pozo to the six. Oh. Leading 14-13, Cristiano wants to throw. Pressured, steps up, got some room. Takes on a tackler, dies forward, he's in, touchdown! Jackson Whitcomb, Colin Peterson the quarterback, on third down. Looking right, now looking over the middle, here's pressure, down he goes, a sack is made. Breaks it now, that's gonna be a huge play. Looks to throw, over the middle, that's caught. And to the right side, and this just might go for 95 yards! And to the right side, and this just might go for 95 yards. Adrian Del Pozo. In on a read, gonna throw on a play action. Delivers the ball over the middle of the field. Tipped away. Nearly picked off, incomplete. Cristiano ready on first down. Throws over the middle, that's caught in stride. Lucas Cristiano. Gets a block to the sideline. He's in. Touchdown, Bloodhounds. Second down and 10 for Hyde Park. Peterson delivers this one down the field. Got him again. Another touchdown. Augie went for a third time. Have another play here. Cristiano drops back. Short pass. This is caught. And on the run is Adrian Del Pozo. Got to the left sideline. Gets to the 10, still on his feet. He's gonna score to close out the half. Plan your escape, beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. So why wait? Sopadre.com. So there you have it, 34-20, your halftime score. A little bonus run of the uh, halftime highlights. We'll be back with a second half kickoff. St. Joe leads this one. Hyde Park will get the ball to start the second half. This is Real Sports Live. Josh Moody and Coach Rolly Gonzalez of Josh Moody Loans are former Harlingen Cardinals and would like to wish all the teams good luck in tonight's games. We are Santa Rosa and you're watching Real Sports Live. There is a feeling you get when you walk onto a campus. A sense of love, compassion, and dedication. An environment that inspires each of our HCISD family members to do their best and to be their best. We ground our education on strong character and together we will always persist towards the future. We are a district of choice. A district of innovation. And a district of excellence. We are HCISD. Edinburgh Bella and you're watching Real Sports Live. Sherryland ISD, a nationally recognized district focusing on quality and rigorous instruction where every child is immersed in a culture of academic success. A district dedicated to preparing our youth for the future. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower all students to reach their full potential and become leaders of the highest moral character. Sherryland ISD. Excellence is our tradition. We are La Villa and you're watching Real Sports Live. Your uniforms, et cetera, you're gonna find the opportunity to purchase the best high quality scrubs. Soon after I learned about how the EDC was helping out uh, the community, and so I did meet with uh, Ms. Castillo. She made it very easy, very friendly, and she walked me every step of the way. I couldn't have done it without their help. Back here on Rio Sports Live, and uh, we do thank you for joining us for our live broadcast here in Brownsville, Texas on a uh, Friday night as we uh, get ready for the uh, third quarter to start. Brownsville St. Joseph with a 14-point lead. And Hyde Park will get the ball to start the second half. And my, how big was that final touchdown to close out the first half to change the look of this one. Hyde Park had scored with 34 seconds left in the half and were in position to take the second half kickoff and look to tie the game. But Brownsville St. Joseph scored in that 34 seconds 
to go back up by two scores and lead 34 to 20. Sun's gone down. We're under the lights here on Rio Sports Live. This is the second half. A lot of games are just getting ready to start here on a Friday night, and here we go. Second half kickoff is a booming kick. Returnable from the six. Out across the 10, middle of the field, the 15 to 20, to the outside to the right side of the 25, 27-yard line. Will Garcia on the return, and that's where the Panthers of Hyde Park will start the second half. Down by two scores. If you're thinking a two-score lead is, is good enough, think again. Both of these teams have had multiple plays in which they've scored on big hitters. And I'm talking over 50-yard type scores. So on any given snap, you got playmakers out there that can take it all the way. First down play of the second half. Running play, right-hand side. Not much there for Drew Foster. He'll be dragged down. And immediately the whistle blows after that play to stop the clock. Now they'll wind it back up. I think the official got decoyed. Two players got tangled up. And he was uh, taking the caution route, thinking somebody was injured. That wasn't the case. So back to action. Second down and nine. Another running play. For Hyde Park, upended across the 31-yard line, another short gain. Two consecutive carries by Drew Foster. And third down and seven coming up for Hyde Park. Here in the third quarter. Wind has all but died. The flag is stagnant in the far end zone. The end zone in which the Hyde Park Panthers are uh, marching. Passing play with time. Deliver a ball down the sideline. That's overthrown. Jack Wincombe, the intended receiver. So an incomplete pass and a punting situation now for Hyde Park. As the St. Joseph defense is able to get the job done on the first possession of the second half. Real Sports Live, uh, the basketball cards we're making, the first edition, are uh, going to be hitting the streets on the next few days. We've got several teams that will be making uh, 750 different basketball cards for boys, 750 on the girls' side. They threw a penalty flag on that play as well. So they'll move it back. It would have been fourth down and 10, but now it's still third down, but now third and 25 yards to go for Hyde Park. Well, now they call it fourth down. So that was after the play, a personal foul. So lots of penalty yards against Hyde Park. Good field position coming up for St. Joe on the exchange. Kick is away, low line drive bounces. Across the 50, fielded there, and here come the uh, Bloodhounds on the return. Now the Garza dropped at the 45. And the St. Joe offense onto the field, leading by two scores at 34 to 20. Luigi Cristiano's had a big first half. Passing the football. Receivers uh, like Adrian De La Ponso. Francisco De La Garza has helped him out. There's an incomplete pass. A rare, just outright drop pass as Adrian Del Pazzo was looking upfield as the ball was entering his hands. Second down and 10 coming up for Brownsville St. Joseph. Ball at the 45 of the Panthers of Hyde Park. Cristiano hands the ball off. 
Out to the 41 yard line is Adrian Del Pozo. He'll gain five, third down coming up. That pass is completed. That's good enough for a first down out across the 30. New set of downs for Brownsville St. Joseph. Cristiano's ready, gets a pass. This is over the middle and it's touchdown. 30 yards. Adrian Del Pozo. Watch on the instant replay. El Pozo just takes it and scores. Extra point coming up. High snap. They get it down. The kick is blocked. Ball to the sideline. Picked up now by the Panthers. This could be two points. Panthers to the right side. One man to beat. Down he goes. Extra point in essence. No good. Penalty flag thrown as well. We'll take a look at that. So they'll retry on the extra point. And this time, the offense on the field for the Bloodhounds of Brownsville St. Joseph. Cristiano is ready on a two-point conversion. Scans the field, waits, delivers, middle right there. Two-point conversion is good. Bloodhounds kicking off, leading after this. Come visit our new store in downtown Harlingen. We have furniture, appliances, clothes, collectibles, and more. All funds collected support the Sunny Glen Children's Home. Come see us at Vintage on Jackson at First and Jackson in Harlingen. I love what I do. I, I really love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. This game is brought to you in part by the concession stand in Santa Rosa, a locally owned business providing a terrific atmosphere before or after the games and supporting athletes of all ages. When you're in Santa Rosa, be sure to stop by the concession stand and choose from the wide assortment of goodies. An advertising partner with Rio Sports Live is the concession stand. Music lovers, you have to stop and see the assortment of records, tapes, and records memorabilia at Forever Memories today. Located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, Texas, there's over 10,000 records on display and more coming every day. Looking for your favorite album from the past? First pressings, collectibles, how about a 45 with a single you just have to have? Freddie Fender, Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, Elvis, Beatles, Blues, Rock, Classics, Tejano, it's all here. Organized and priced for you, Forever Memories, 237 North Sam Houston, San Benito. We are La Villa, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Whether you're Back here, an odd series of events there on an extra point. Let me recap it for you. First, the traditional extra point was blocked by Hyde Park, nearly returned for a two-point score, penalty flat. St. Joseph brings the offense on the field, two-point conversion, pass completed, apparently two points good, penalty flag. Third attempt, no good, here's the kickoff. On the return, Hyde Park out across the 25-yard uh, line to the 30, and that's where the uh, Panthers will uh, take over. Now down 40 to 20.
And Hyde Park, down these three scores, will now have to go to work against Brownsville St. Joseph, who is comfortably on top. At 40 to 20, first down play. Quarterback keeps it on a read. Got a good block out across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Colin Peterson again. Call that seven yards on the carry. Marked down at the 39 yard line. For Hyde Park. Man in motion. Quarterback Peterson going to keep it again. Got a first down. Out across the 45 to the 46. Colin Peterson on a good read. Able to take it out across for that first down. Third quarter action here at Brownsville. The St. Joe Bloodhounds taking on Hyde Park. I'm Joe Bowling, my wife Dahlia on the camera. Like and follow our page on our Facebook page, if you will. Share the link for the broadcast. Hand off again, another running play. All this drive on the ground as they'll take it out across the 50. Drew Foster again on the carry. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. What we do here was free of charge on the broadcast, free of charge the fans to watch it. There are those that have uh, entities set up to charge fans. They charge schools. We just don't do that. Second down play. Peterson going to keep it. Dropped. Short gain on the play. Thanks to Evan Avila, the sophomore linebacker who made the stop. Loss of about a half a yard. Third and five coming up for Hyde Park. Third and five. Wide right is Augie Went. You better watch him. Peterson rolls that way, delivers. Went with a catch. Wrapped up. And a good defensive play that time by the uh, St. Joe Bloodhounds. Brings up fourth down. Offense stays on the field right now for Hyde Park. Fourth and four for Peterson. Rolls out to throw, delivers. Man there, caught. That's a first down to the 42-yard line. Bringing that one in is Henry Gravitt. Drive continues here for Hyde Park. Ball at the St. Joe 40. Rolling out is Peterson. Going to keep it. Turns it upfield. Peterson gets out of bounds. Gains nine. Second and one coming up for Hyde Park. Peterson also got out of bounds. That stops the clock with 6.44 to go. We're in the third quarter here, a five o'clock kickoff under a bright sun. Now playing under the twilight. Running play to the outside. Bassett turns it upfield, ends up gaining eight on the play and gets a first down for Hyde Park. We saw a heavy dose of passing earlier by Hyde Park, but this drive primarily on the ground other than the fourth down conversion on a pass. 
Bassett got out of bounds where they say he stepped, he was stopped before so, so they do start the clock back up. And it's running down at the 23 yard line of the uh, Bloodhounds. Peterson sends Bassett in motion, keeps it. Wrapped up, short game. Good tackle made that time as Miguel Cortez, the junior, was able to make the stop. Reaching the midway point of the third quarter here for Hyde Park. Second down and eight. Peterson is ready. Play clock at eight. Fakes a handoff to Bassett, delivers a pass, and it's nearly intercepted. Tadeo Garza, the defensive back, was right in there for a position to make a big play. Breaks it up, incomplete pass, third down. Appreciation again to the uh, St. Joe School District for assisting us in broadcasting the game, giving us a spot here in the bleachers to broadcast the game from and the connections up top. Also the PA announcer helping me on uh, getting the rosters on hand, even though Hyde Park didn't have them till late, late, late in the game. We still had them in our hands. Third down play, Peterson. Hands it off, Bassett turns the corner, got a first down and more, takes it down, dives, end zone, scored. A late call for the official, but Bassett stretched out. Literally dove for the last two yards. We'll watch it on the replay here and see. He stayed in bounds, first of all, and stayed running forward. And look at the dive. Score the touchdown. Great camera work. We'll go back to that and see if his knee was down when he dove. They won't review that, obviously. We can. Might put it up in one of those plays. Did he or did he not score? Extra point is blocked by Brownsville St. Joseph. Let's take a look again at the replay. Watch the end of this and see if Bassett's knee was down right there. Nope, I don't think it was. Doesn't matter, he's in. Extra point, no good. Kickoff coming up. 14 point lead, Greyhounds with that lead. They'll get the ball after this. Island. Be sure to book your place to stay with Island Services. Locally owned for over 40 years. Trusted, reliable for condo and beach house rentals. Call and visit the website today, Island Services. We are Lauren Carlos and you're watching Real Sports Live. Hi, I'm Roto Vegas, and I'm a partner with New York Life Insurance Company. For 170 years, New York Life has built a reputation for building some of the finest agents in the industry. I help to manage that process from day one. If you're looking to challenge yourself and build an insurance and financial service business, then I would like to show you how I can help. Aquí, en la Universidad de Texas A&M, Kingsville. Somos una familia. Nosotros nos apoyamos. Trabajamos juntos. Crecemos juntos. Triunfamos juntos. Nos inspiramos los unos a los otros. Para convertirnos en las grandes mentes del futuro. Estamos aquí para asegurarnos que tú triunfes. Aplica hoy para empezar. Es tu momento. Back here on Rio Sports Live at kickoff time here in the third quarter with 521 left in quarter number three. Hyde Park after scoring, down 14. We'll put it into play. We've seen a lot of short kicks. You have to be ready on the up front side of these kick return teams. Fielded there by the Bloodhounds. They'll down it at the 43, and that's where they'll bring Cristiano and the offense back on the field yet again. Go. 
from the 43. Bloodhounds led at halftime by 14. Each team has scored here in this second half. Cristiano on first down. Hands it off, second man through, right side, a lot of room, and here's De La Pozo to the 40-yard line, then a penalty flag at the end of it. This one apparently coming back. Spot foul, march it from the 40. Back to the midfield stripe. Seven yards net gain on the play for Brownsville St. Joe. Still first down, now call it first and four. Here in the third quarter. Cristiano sets him down. Man in motion, fakes the handoff, looks to throw. Waits, tipped and incomplete. Santiago Vidari. Off his hands, third down. St. Joe Volleyball made the playoffs. We'll get the details on that this evening on where and when they'll be playing. We should have a crew in place to cover that. On this third down play, it's back to the ground for the Bloodhounds. That's a short gain, not enough for a first down on a carry by Del Pozo. So third and four coming up for Brownsville St. Joseph. This is a good opportunity here if the Panthers want to try to claw their way back into this contest. Bloodhounds like a first down. Cristiano hands it off. They'll get the first down and some more. Del Pozo may go. He will. 46 yards. On a short yardage situation. Watch the speed by Del Pozo when he gets in the secondary. Right here. And that's literally running right through four individuals for the score. Bloodhounds back up by 20, looking for another. Low snap, they'll get it down. The kick is up and away, and there's no flags. It's good. And we'll have the kickoff right after this. You're watching Real Sports Live. Forever Memories, antiques and collectibles, located at 237 North Sam Houston in San Benito, is filled with vintage items, collectibles, and a selection of vinyl records that's as good as it gets. Every shelf, every aisle, and table is filled daily by a number of vendors that ensures that something here just might be the item you have to have. The vital record area helps bring an added atmosphere that makes for the fun trip when stepping back in time with the memories. Forever memories, antiques and collectibles in San Benito. The Brownsville Independent School District continues to provide a safe environment for enriching education. From pre-K-3 to early college high school, the award-winning district has advanced its legacy in curriculum, athletics, and fine arts. Teachers are driving the frontier of technology, bringing industry to the classroom. On and off the field, Brownsville ISD students engage in the experiences that make them college and career ready. Brownsville Independent School District, the best choice. And he throws it down. Hey! See you later, touchdown. Back here in Brownsville on a Friday night, fighting bloodhounds of uh, St. Joe Academy on top in this one, 47 to 26, and they kick off to the Hyde Park Panthers. Panthers will fall on it at their own 38. Not much opportunities on kick return to this evening, uh, despite the fact that between the two teams, we've had 73 points 
put on the scoreboard. 47-26. Again, basketball fans reminding you that on Monday, we've got our first basketball game of the year. On the girls' side, it'll be Lasara traveling to Idea Westico. 7 o'clock tip-off on that one. Additional girls basketball throughout the week, including games on that Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Girls basketball in full swing. Throw in some volleyball playoffs. We've got the final week of regular season football. Another busy week here on Real Sports Live. Running play for the Panthers goes for short yards. Maybe a gain of a yard. Second and nine coming up. That was Foster on the carry. Peterson on second down. Hands it off to the motion side, turns it upfield. Not much there. Trying to get the ball in the hands, and that time it was Jackson Whitcomb. Very short, he, he didn't gain anything. Got back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Third and nine coming up. Bloodhounds defense trying to make a stop. Panthers. Man in motion is Whitcomb. Peterson rolls out right side, delivers over the middle, underneath, caught. Augie went with yet another catch. Well, they'll say it hit the ground first, incomplete pass. So fourth and nine now. And a punt is away. Bloodhounds on the return. Dropped at the 35. And with a 21 point lead. Well, wait a minute, there's a penalty flag thrown back around the spot of the punt. Now one of the officials is gonna, well, he looked like he was gonna wave it off. They'll call an illegal block before the punt. And on the choice, Brownsville St. Joe elects just to take the football on the exchange. They could have made him back up and punt again. But they'll take over. Leading by 21, 237 left here in the third quarter. Reminding you, we'll be naming our player of the game at the end of this one. Now they'll put the ball down at the Panther 49. So they, they elected to take the penalty after the punt. And so St. Joseph in real good shape here on this drive. First down play for Cristiano hands it off. This is Del Pozo. He's got another big gainer to the left-hand side. He may go again. 49 more yards. Stop short of that, but a big gain. Del Pozo with another huge gain. Give him 38 on that one. And first down, just inside the 10, call it goal to goal for the Bloodhounds.
Bloodhounds shift a man to the right side. First and goal. Cristiano rolling right. Waits, delivers, rifles it, caught! Touchdown! Lucas Cristiano with another catch. 53-26, St. Joseph on top. Oh wait, there's a penalty flag. Take that, those points off the board. We've had our share of those here this evening. Still goal to goal for St. Joseph. But now goal to goal outside the, about the 14 and a half yard line. Cristiano, three receivers wide right, a single receiver to the short side of the field on the left side. Cristiano looking right all the way. Picks up a block, underthrows that one incomplete. Tried to get it to uh, Del Pozo. Second and goal to go from the 16-yard uh, line. Cristiano ready to go. Looking. Pressure comes. Gets rid of the ball. Incomplete pass. Call it now third down. Still goal to go. Cristiano. Asked to look to the sideline and call a timeout. He was trying to position players. Just a little confusion in the backfield. Greyhounds up big. We'll be back with more after this. Same great service, same great people, same great cars and trucks, and these great white events. Our vision is crystal clear. Look for your motors. We're on the move. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? Sopadre.com. Back here on Rio Sports Live. Cristiano back to throw, looking, delivers. It's caught. Ball knocked loose. That's an incomplete pass. That'll bring up fourth and goal. For the Bloodhounds. Cristiano on fourth and goal. Sets up a screen, it's caught. Here's Del Pozo again, and he's in, scores a yet another touchdown. No flags on this one. And Del Pozo continues to light up the scoreboard tonight for Brownsville St. Joseph. Whether it's on the receiving side or on the running side. Fifty-three twenty-six. the score. Extra point coming up for the uh, Bloodhounds. Good snap, kick is away, and it is good. 
54-26. More coming up after this. We are the Highland Lady Cardinals, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. I love what I do. I, I really love what do. I'm doing. I love children. One of the most important things to do is to love your students. Imagine teachers like these helping your child prepare to change the world. Take a closer look at Mission CISD. Back here as we get ready for another kickoff here. We're still in the third quarter, under a minute to go, but Brownsville St. Joseph on homecoming night. On top by the score of 54 to 26. Joe Bowling with you, my wife Dahlia running the camera. Back and forth affair was a one score game earlier in this third quarter. But Brownsville St. Joseph has now extended it out to the 54 26 lead. Huge night again for Adrian Del Pozo. Deep kickoff. Returnable from the six, out across the 10 to the uh, 20 yard line. Bouncing it outside upfield at about the 26. And that's where the uh, Panthers of Hyde Park will take over. Play, 54-26 the score. Big crowd here is stuck around for this one. There's homecoming stuff going on in the far end zone. Music, food, entertainment, celebration for a homecoming weekend here at St. Joseph. And right now on the uh, upside of the scoreboard, 54 to 26. Lengthy pause before the first play on this drive for Hyde Park. Hyde Park came in with limited numbers. There was only, now you see the celebration going down there. That's been going on, pumping the music, and uh, I, I keep hearing him talk about all the food that's down there. When you come in here having not eaten, we may have to stop by and just see what we can find on our way out of here tonight. We're ready to go for the uh, drive for Hyde Park. First down play. They'll run it up the middle. Short yardage. Again, it was an underman squad coming in here. On the sidelines right now, they've got 10 players. 11 on the field. 21 dressed out from the bus ride for this evening's action. Battled this thing into the uh, third quarter competitive. It was a one-score game with about nine minutes left in the third quarter. And now we'll head to the fourth. St. Joseph on top in this one, 54 to 26. We'll be back with more as the fourth quarter on homecoming night is right after this. Beach, bay, or both. Sun rises and sun sets daily. Memories made all day. Live music and great food round out your visit. So why wait? SoPadre.com. Service is attitude. How far are we willing to go to service our community? 
our dealership here for you, and you, sky's the limit. We're the Ray Texans, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Josh Moody and Coach Rolly Gonzalez of Josh Moody Loans are former Harlingen Cardinals and would like to wish all the teams good luck in tonight's games. We are Santa Rosa and you're watching Real Sports Live. There is... Back to action here on Rio Sports Live at a long pass play to start the uh, fourth quarter. Uh, Falls incomplete. As the Panthers of Hyde Park dialed up another long pass play, hoping for some more magic from Augie Wint. Well defended that time by the Bloodhounds of St. Joe. And it brings up third and nine. On this play, Peterson bobbles the snap. Now he delivers the ball, looking for Wint again. This time he drops that one incomplete. Got turned around a little bit, defended on the play by Lucas Cristiano. Wint was in position to make that play. Fourth down for Hyde Park. Two receivers, make that three receivers on the left side. One of them just continues in motion right out of bounds. Hyde Park is gonna have to burn a timeout. They weren't sure who was gonna be on the field. They'll take a timeout. Now they'll just take a delay a game. You saw receivers going out to that left-hand side, and one just kept going. Went out of bounds. Coaching staff immediately looked over on the bench where players were seated. And there was the receiver that should have been in on the play. So they took the five-yard penalty. Fourth down, still punting formation. Two players back to return this kick for the Bloodhounds. One of those is Adrian Del Pozo. Why not? He's done everything else. The punt goes out of bounds. As the ball sailed out of bounds, that was Tino Villarreal making the catch. <laughs> on, the, on the errant punt. Give him credit for a re reception on a punt return. No yards on the return. Bloodhounds in good shape to start this drive in better shape on the scoreboard. Leading 54-26. Quick pass play left-hand side. On the run is Nick Mara Trevino. Gains five on the play, second and five coming up for Brownsville St. Joseph. One of our sponsors tonight is uh, Forever Memories. We'll be open tomorrow with good sales on their records. Here's another pass play. Mara Trevino again makes a man miss, makes another miss, and then Steps out of bounds around the 20-yard line. They'll hold the horses on that one. The official calls a hold against Brownsville St. Joseph. That one's coming back. I talked about the limited substitutions on the sideline for Hyde Park. St. Joseph has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 13 players in uniform on the sideline here this evening. 11 on the field.
second down and eight. Cristiano looking to throw. Pressured, steps away from that. Now going to run and gets out of bounds around the uh, 30, maybe the 31. Short of a first down. Cristiano got better yardage than they initially had indicated. They give him credit all the way down to the 28. Now they march it back. After a penalty. That was an illegal block downfield. That's a spot foul to march that off. Cristiano to throw again, right side. It's caught. Lucas Cristiano makes a nice move. Sidesteps another man. It's a lot of running for short yardage. Well short of the first down. And another flag is thrown. Officials said I didn't mean to throw it, so they pick it up. Wind the clock and away we go. Fifty-four twenty-six your score. Third and ten for Brownsville St. Joseph. Cristiano looking to throw, delivers it right side. That's caught, man, wide open on the sidelines. That's enough for a first down. There's Lucas Cristiano with another catch. Looking to throw again, Cristiano gets it in the hands of looking for Anwar Joby that time. Incomplete pass. Bloodhounds down at the 24-yard line of Hyde Park. Cristiano rolls out, looking underneath. That's going to be caught inside the 15-yard line. Marcelo Masso, the senior wideout, makes a catch. That's enough for a first down in the red zone opportunity now for the Bloodhounds. Luigi Cristiano having a big night here this evening against Hyde Park. Gonna run, now throws, caught! Touchdown, Brownsville St. Joseph. Another catch by Lucas Cristiano. Sixty to twenty six. And Luigi Cristiano continue. There's the extra point blocked. Another blocked extra point recovered by the Bloodhounds. There's a penalty flag as well. We've certainly had our share of penalty flags on extra point attempts here this evening. Makes for some excitement, to say the least. 
This one will be against Hyde Park. So St. Joe uh, will get another chance. Other games going on tonight. Right now, Taft Monte Alto. We've got that one on the air. PSJA at Edinburgh North. Coffer again, Riviera Coffer on against Lavia. We've got that one for you. Valley View at Sherryland. Hidalgo La Feria. Ingleside Raymondville. Westaco Harlingen South. Los Fresnos Brownsville Hanna. Skidmore Tynan, Santa Rosa, Odom and Hebronville. And this one. Extra point is away. No flags, it's good. St. Joseph, 61. Panthers 26, kickoff coming up right after this. To a campus. A sense of love, compassion, and dedication. An environment that inspires each of our HCISD family members to do their best and to be their best. We ground our education on strong character and together, we will always persist towards the future. We are a district of choice. A district of innovation. And a district of excellence. We are HCISD. We are Edinburgh Bella and you're watching Real Sports Live. Sherryland ISD, a nationally recognized district focusing on quality and rigorous instruction where every child is immersed in a culture of academic success. A district dedicated to preparing our youth for the future. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower all students to reach their full potential and become leaders of the highest moral character. Sherryland ISD, excellence is our tradition. We are Lavia, and you're watching Real Sports Live. Back here on Real Sports Live, and I'm with my wife, Dahlia. We were just talking about the first year back in 2017 when we were doing our first game here at Brownsville St. Joseph. It was within a week or two of this. 2017, I'll finish that thought after this kick return. We had already done a few a few weeks games here in Brownsville at St. Joseph, which is where Real Sports Live started our broadcast. And we put together a second computer and a <laughs> it was a webcam and a gamer headset. We ran that over to Rio Hondo, which we had the same setup here at the time. Uh, we were just hoping and praying we could get two games on at the same time back then. That was early days in which we were like, can we get more than one game on at the same time? Come a long way now as I ran down that list of all the games that are being broadcast on Real Sports Live tonight here live. First down play, running play out across the 25. Second and 10 coming up for Hyde Park. The decision during that year in 2017 when we started was as we built, it was, it was one of two roads. Second down play. On a read, keeper, and good yardage gain that time by Colin Peterson. Continuing with the thought, the, the two roads to travel once we got this rolling was A, more systems, more games, or B, more equipment and a higher level of television-style broadcast. It was a few weeks later in which we got a couple extra cameras and we went the route of additional broadcast because of the fact that it was gaining momentum, the number of schools that recognized the opportunity of showcasing their athletes 
here on Rio Sports Live. But I was ever, ever conscious that one day we were going to have that one system that was going to be with four or five cameras, sideline reporters, and put on a special platform, which is what we're now in the process of uh, continuing to build on. So there'll be some big changes coming up to uh, some of the games and the way you get to see them here on Real Sports Live. Peterson runs out there, gains four yards. 61-26 the score. Brownsville St. Joseph. At one time it was 34-26. St. Joe on top. Third down and five. Peterson hands it off. That's just shy of first down yardage. Jackson Whitcomb on the carry. Now they will move the chains and call it a first down. Peterson is ready on a first down play. Fires a pass, that's incomplete. Brings up second down. Second and 10 for Hyde Park. Peterson is ready. Gonna throw again, pressure, delivers. Downfield, it's gonna be caught, oh, incomplete. Incomplete pass. Anwar Joby was down there against Augie Wint. Watch on your replay on the right side of your screen here. Two players fighting for possession of this ball all the way to the ground. And it finally came out of there. Incomplete pass. Great camera work again. On third down, Peterson sends a man in motion. Hands it off. Not much there. Bassett on the carry. Now here comes penalty flags. At the end of that play. Call that against Hyde Park. Fifteen yard variety all the way back to their forty. And so it will be still third down. Peterson looking to throw. Rifles that downfield. That's picked off by the Greyhound or the Bloodhounds. Blood 
Tadeo Garza, the sophomore, was able to pull it in and then a penalty flag thrown. After that, for excessive celebration, I would imagine. As the officials sort it out, we'll take a quick break. This is Real Sports Live. The opportunity to purchase the best high quality scrubs. Soon after I learned about how the EDC was helping out uh, the community, and so I did meet with uh, Ms. Castillo. She made it very easy, very friendly, and she walked me every step of the way. I couldn't have done it without their help. Come visit our new store in downtown Harlingen. We have furniture, appliances, clothes, collectibles, and more. All funds collected support the Sunny Glen Children's Home. Come see us at Vintage on Jackson at First in Jackson in Harlingen. Penalty ended up being against Hyde Park. Welcome back to our broadcast here after the uh, break. Again, those advertisers are the reason why we're able to do what we can do, fans. If nothing else, stop in and say thank you to those individuals that you see advertising here on Real Sports, providing us an opportunity to get out there. Without them, we couldn't do what we do, especially for free. Running play for the uh, Bloodhounds. Big gainer down the uh, sideline, still on his feet. Nick Marthravino on a carry. Give him 22 on that carry for Mar Trevino. Bloodhounds in Hyde Park territory. Play clock down to Five. They'll have to hurry to get this snap off. New quarterback in the game, by the way, Francisco De La Garza. No snap. They get a timeout or they just take a penalty? Looks like they just took the delay a game. Luigi Cristiano had a monster game here this evening. My player of the game decision is going to come down to a coin toss. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Another carry for Mar Trevino. Hit and brought down. On one hand, I've got Luigi Cristiano, who is just lights out terrific, delivering pass after pass, touchdown strike after touchdown strike. And then there's Adrian Del Pozo, who on the ground... Every time Hyde Park thought they were right there to get back in this game, he reels off a touchdown scoring run. Another carry for Mars Ravino. Got it back to the 35-yard line. So I think on that merit, I'll give my player the game to Adrian Del Pozo. Several touchdowns tonight on the receiving side and running. And again, just the times he scored the touchdowns were the big playmaking, game-changing type of plays. Whistle blows there before the snap. And more penalty yards tacked on against Brownsville St. Joseph. Our thanks again to all the fans who tuned into this one. Reminding you that we'll have a highlight reel playing a little bit later on after this game. Pass play for the uh, Bloodhounds. That's complete. Back to the 30-yard line. Lucas Cristiano, he had some touchdown receptions tonight. Caught that one on a uh, pass by De La Garza. 
That's junior quarterback, the sophomore receiver. But there's a holding call. Our player of the game is going to be again. Adrian Del Pozo. And that's a fumbled snap. And the Panthers may have recovered that one. They keep the clock running, which means that the uh, Bloodhounds got it. Ball back in their own territory. This drive is going in a negative direction for Brownsville St. Joseph. I'm going to give it to 21. No, I know. I said four or five touchdowns. Yeah. I don't know how many. I know. Punting situation for the Bloodhounds of St. Joseph. That punt is away. Returnable here by the Panthers. Out to the 41, that's it. Panthers offense back on the field. Brittany Marvin was out taking a lot of photos of this game. We'll have some uh, galleries posted on this. She'll also be providing the photo of the player of the game. And then, uh, of course, if you like some of her photos, you can also go to her website to procure up more action shots. Be watching on our, uh, our post on our social media and uh, navigate your way in to see her additional photos. First down play for the Panthers from the 41 yard line. Again, this was a 34 to 26 game at one time and it's now 61-26. As St. Joe found another gear. Pass nearly picked off right into the hands of Luis Medola. I think he was so shocked that it landed in his hands. Now they'll say it's recovered, but that wasn't a fumble. That was a shovel pass, I believe. Now we may, we'll sort it out. The official wants to spot it there. Coach is gonna lobby, that was a shovel pass. But they'll call it a fumble. Colin Peterson, I mean, with the shovel pass that exists, all the quarterback has to do is make a motion of any kind that the ball is going out of his hands forward with intent. In this case, that looked exact. I mean, he was definitely trying to get rid of the football, but it was a forward type lateral, if nothing else, right into the hands of Luis Mendola. Mendola's like, I should have just caught that one and ran. And he could have. Because Peterson was being wrapped up. There was nobody to block. They'll sort it out. Again, the, the, the debate going on on the far side of the field is the definition of when a quarterback is in the act of passing a ball. If that ball's, well, let's just say this. If that hits a offensive player, then that's considered a pass. It's not a lateral because it went forward. So because it goes right into the hands of a defender, it's still, and I, I can, I'm not down there, but I can tell you word for word, the coach is saying, that's still a pass. Nonetheless, Take a knee for Brownsville St. Joe. They'll do that a couple more times, and homecoming is a little bit sweeter for 2021 for the Bloodhounds with a victory here. And playoff hopes still very much alive for this Brownsville St. Joseph team. As they'll go on the road next week for a tough matchup in Austin against Regents. I said in our preview magazine that anybody with real intentions of winning the district in this district 
had better take a look at that Regents team. And so Brownsville St. Joseph will be heading down there. Another kneel. Again, my player of the game could have, could have been a coin toss easy. Luigi Cristiano, how many touchdown passes did he have? Just let's say a bunch. But some of those went to Adrian Del Pozo, who, by the way, also ran some touchdowns. And it wasn't just that he scored the scores. It was when they scored. It was every time the Panthers seemed to be in position to say, we're back in this game. And Del Pozo would score, including that touchdown, late in the first half. Two teams out on the field. They won't have to take another snap. We head into our postgame show. Final score here, 61-26. to Brownsville St. Joseph wins. And Adrian Del Pozo, our player of the game. For my wife, Dahlia, thanks for racing down here after work to go right back to work and operate a camera, just like old times, right? Once in a while, it's okay, she says. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast, my friends. Reminding you again, in the old days, we had just one game going on. Now, you have an opportunity of going to watch PSJA Edinburgh North, Riviera Coffer or Levia. Valley View, Sherryland, Laferia, Hidalgo, Ingleside, Raymondville, Westaco, Harlingen South, Los Fresnos, Brownsville, Hannah, Skidmore, Tynan, Santa Rosa, Odom, and Hebronville. At your choice is Real Sports Live, alive and well in 2021. Till next time, hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Joe Bowling. So long. And welcome to another broadcast here on RealSportsLive.com. Joe Bowling with you, coming to you from Brownsville, Texas, and it's St. Joe taking on the Hannah Brownsville Eagles. They're getting set for the playing of the national anthem, and we're having the prayer as we speak. Once again, we thank you for joining us here on a broadcast here on RealSportsLive.com. Joe Bowling with you. we got three cameras set up and two of our camera operators in place. We'll have the third one in place here in just a moment because she's running some waters all around the place. It's a pretty warm gymnasium. Hannah, Golden Eagles in town to take on the uh, Bloodhounds of St. Joseph Academy. And, wow, what a busy place we've been with St. Joe here lately. We were here for a basketball game last week. We were here for football on Saturday. We're back here for basketball. And, hey, guess what? Friday night we're going to San Antonio and we will be live from San Antonio, Texas on Friday night as the Brownsville St. Joe Academy Bloodhounds are in round two of the playoffs. And on Saturday we'll also be live coming your way from Alamo Stadium. San Antonio, Texas is the spot. 
and it'll be the Los Fresnos Falcons in action against San Antonio Southwest. Live video and audio across the board here on RioSportsLive.com. We're live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Roku. That won't go. Missed by Trevor Lette. Ball belongs to the Eagles. Eagles in the front court, working around the perimeter. Jesus Huerta has it. Bounce pass over on the left wing. Caught there by uh, Jaime Rucaba. Over for another three for the Eagles, and perfect. Jesus Huerta drops in a three ball. That's two threes for the Eagles out of the gate. It's a 6 nothing ball game. St. Joe facing pressure in the backcourt against this Hannah defense. In the front court, here comes Cesar Garcia. Down to the right side, pulls up for the jumper off the glass. No good, too strong. Rebound by the Eagles. They want to run. In the front court with it is Jaime Rucaba. Has his dribble taken away. Backs it back outside over the long pass over the defense to Huerta. Huerta on the baseline. Shot goes up. That's no good. Wild shot taken down by the Bloodhounds, and the Bloodhounds want to run. In the front court, they come. On the guard is Peter Silvero around the perimeter. Cesar Garcia catches. 6.38 to go in the first quarter. All Eagles thus far, and that ball's tipped on a back cut. St. Joe had the right idea, but defensively getting over there. Hannah Eagles will tip it out of bounds. Warm gymnasium, it always is when we play here. Thanks again for joining us here on RioSportsLive.com. Inbound play coming up for the Bloodhounds. Work it outside in the hands of Garcia. Garcia, bounce pass, left wing to Lette. Plays catch with Garcia with 6.18 to go in the first quarter. Free throw line, turn around, pass inside, and the whistle blows, and the foul is going to be called on Hannah. Now call it on Rukaba, that's his first. Non shooting foul, St. Joe basketball underneath the goal. And they'll look to throw it in in the corner. For that whistle and a timeout called. High school basketball coming to you from St. Joe. 6 nothing Eagles. We'll be back after this on RealSportsLive.com. Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here after the timeout, and the St. Joe Bloodhounds get a basket. Jacob Esparza with the bucket. Cuts the Hannah lead to 6-2. to two. 5.59 to go here in the first quarter play. Hannah Golden Eagles in town, taking on Brownsville St. Joe. Jose Torre has the ball, pass it over for a three by Huerta. He's got two already, misses this one, but a backdoor rebound, put it up and in. Untouched was Rukaba, got the easy rebound and the stick back. Hannah now applies the pressure in the backcourt. St. Joe with the ball. Bloodhound still in the backcourt. Esparza brings it closer, but not across yet, near a 10 second call. They finally do just get it across the line. Garcia has it. Pass over to Esparza. Esparza takes a look, hands it back outside to Garcia. 5.25 to go here in the first quarter. Hannah jumped out to a 6-0 lead thanks to two three-pointers in a row. Bloodhounds with the ball. Top of the key to Garcia. Garcia on a clear out. Works on the dribble with the right hand. Got a screen. Veers right side, pulls the trigger, and short. Rebound to the Golden Eagles. Good box out in where they got the rebound in the front court. Here are the Eagles. They'll check that that was Jimenez that got that board. Torre with the ball. Stopped his dribble. Left side to Huerta. Huerta back to Torre. 8-2. Hand a lead. 4.55 to go here in the first quarter. Huerta plays catch with Torre. Now joining the mix is Rukaba. Rukaba beats him out of the dribble and is taken away. On the turnover, here come the Bloodhounds. Back trying to capitalize. 
in the front court. Silvero now runs a point. Left-hand side for a three on the way. In and out. No good. Off the mark by left. Rebound by the Golden Eagles. Jimenez with another board. 4.30 to go in the first quarter. Hannah in the gold uniforms with the white trim. Right side pass to Huerta. Back to Torre. Torre runs the point against the 2-3 zone. Force that pass at the free throw line. Turnover. Here come the uh, Bloodhounds in the front court. Silvero with a left-hand layup. That won't go. Rebound. Silvero. Stepped in, got it, but the whistle blew. There was contact underneath. And they'll call this on Austin Jimenez of Brownsville, Hannah. Inbound play coming up for the Bloodhounds. Triggering it is Lette. Threw it into Garcia. Garcia puts it on the floor, pulls the trigger on the jumper. That rims in. Cesar Garcia just inside the arc. His first two points of the game. Cuts the Hannah lead. Actually, they give him a three on that. Hannah with the ball on the offensive end. Bloodhound defense trying to keep this. There's another forced pass, but a foul is going to be called. This time they'll get Camillo Trevino on the foul. Substitute off the bench for the Bloodhounds. Marte Rodriguez checks in the ball game. He'll replace Trevor Lette. Meanwhile, for the... uh, Hannah Eagles, Victor Campos checks into the ball game, and he'll replace Austin Jimenez. Whistle blows, the official wants to talk it over. With 340 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Yes, indeed, my friends, it's high school basketball here tonight. Friday night we'll be in San Antonio for the Bloodhounds of St. Joe taking on round two of the playoffs. That'll be played at Central Catholic. That's a neutral site. And then in the Saturday afternoon game at Alamo Stadium, we've got the clearance to broadcast the game between Los Fresnos and San Antonio Southwest. We're still putting together sponsorship on that. We've got uh, some sponsors that have kicked in enough to make us worthy of covering that game. We encourage you fans out there to try to pass the word to some other businesses that may help us in this one going out of the valley to cover a couple of teams in playoff action. Head and shoulder fake in the paint. Shot goes up, missed off the mark by Noe Armstrong, and then a foul call. Armstrong working hard inside traffic, but in this case, Victor Campos got the board and gets to the free throw line. Campos in the ball game, one rebound. 3.40 to go in the first quarter. First one up and in. Next one for Campos. Substitution check back in the game for the Eagles. Matthew Lopez checks in. Campos free throw. Missed on that one. Long rebound to the Bloodhounds. Jacob Esparza controlled that board. 8-5 ball game. A chance to tie from beyond the arc if the Bloodhounds pull the trigger on that. On the work is Trevino. Top of the key it goes to Garcia. Garcia got a screen. Here's a three for the tie, and no good. Rebound, Eagles all over that. In the front court, now the Eagles will run the offense. Left side pass, head and shoulder fakes, step back, no shot. Here's a three on the way for the Eagles. That one won't go. Rebound by the Bloodhounds. Good job, Cesar Garcia, ripping that board out of the air. Bloodhounds in the front corner. Back out to set the offense up, Silvero. 3.39 3.39 and counting here in the first quarter. Bloodhounds have trailed throughout, but have clawed their way back after trailing. 6-0 on the dribble Garcia. Right wing pass for a long three. That one's no good. Rebound tipped. Out of bounds it goes. Bloodhounds will touch it last. Substitution off the Bloodhound bench. Here comes Neto Garza in the ball game. Neto will replace Jacob Esparza, who has a seat on the bench. Hannah Ball in the front court. Lopez, his pass threw it away. Just an outright turnover on the Eagles that time, unforced. Third of the game against the Hannah Golden Eagles. 3.09 to go here in the first quarter. 9 5 your score. Bloodhounds with the ball. Silvera plays catch with Trevino. Looks inside to Trevino, cuts through, made it. 
Silvero to Trevino, the assist, and the bucket for Trevino, his sec- er, first points of the night. 2.51 to go, two-point ball game. Hannah back with the ball. Out of the gate, they hit two threes to start this game. Took that lead, and now it's down to two. Lopez has it. Lobs it inside on the blocks. Back outside to Lopez. Skip it over. Rubicata wants the shot. Rims out, no good. Offensive rebound. Another three launched by the Eagles. That won't go either. Rebound tipped up. Whistle blows and foul called. That'll be on the Golden Eagles. Substitution coming in for Hannum. Jesus Huerta back in the ball game. He's got six points. He'll replace Matthew Lopez. Meanwhile, inbound play coming up for the Bloodhounds. We thank you again for joining us here on RioSportsLive.com. St. Joseph will inbound the ball. There was moisture on the floor, so they took care of that. Bloodhounds with the basketball. Off the dribble, Silvero brings it down the sideline. Now they'll set it up on the offensive end for the Eagles. Our Bloodhounds, chance to tie here or take the lead inside the paint. That ball stripped and a foul's called. Cesar Garcia attacked the defense. Foul called on Victor Campos. Garcia will step to the free throw line. For the Bloodhounds. First one, no good. Second one coming up for Garcia. Made that. One of two on the trip. We got a one point game. Hannah with the ball. Again, they've led throughout this ball game, but the lead is now as close as it can get. Jose Torre handed off to Huerta, back to Torre. Torre with a minute 51 to go in the half. Lobs it over to Rucaba. Off the dribble, get it back outside to Torre. Torre lost his dribble. Over it goes to Huerta. Back in the hands of Torre. Between the two circles with a minute 36 left here in the quarter. Patience set this time by Hannah, working that zone back and forth at the top. Now in the corner, open three for the Eagles. That's too strong. Rebound. St. Joe Bloodhounds, Neto Garza with the board, and they've got a chance to take the lead. Front court action. Inside, layup, no good. Miss, ball goes out of bounds off St. Joseph. Neto had a golden chance to make a bucket there. Nothing doing. Minute three left. Substitution in the game. Mauricio Rodriguez will check in for St. Joe. Hannah still has the lead. Two quick threes out of the gate. Where at the top of the key. Gets it back. Around the perimeter to Torrey. Top of the key, back to Torre. Once a three, no, he lives it inside. Shot blocked, though. Rebound taken down, and Hannah's going to get to the line. Terrific block shot that time by St. Joe's Bloodhounds, Camilo Trevino. But then on the offensive rebound, Austin Jimenez, man on the spot, gets fouled, heads to the free throw line. Stops the clock with 36.28 seconds left here in quarter number one. Substitution ready to check in as Chris turns. For Hannah. Meanwhile, Jimenez at the line. Good on the first. Here comes Turns in the game. He'll replace Torre. Next free throw for Jimenez. Missed that one. Whistle blows on the rebound. We got a push off on the blocks. They'll get Noe Armstrong on that. Noah picks up his first foul. Substitution. Noah Martinez in the game. Armstrong has a seat. 33 seconds left here in the first quarter of play. St. Joseph has the ball in the backcourt. Up to the timeline, Garcia. Chance to tie or take the lead for the Bloodhounds. Garcia to Silvero. Top of the key to Rodriguez. Back in the corner. Off the dribble. 
Nowhere to go. Pass out to Trevino. Further out with 12 seconds to go. Off the dribble, Garcia pulls the trigger on a long jumper. No good. Rebound by the Bloodhounds. Jumper on the way. That one's well short, too. Rebound. Golden Eagles. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. They will not get a shot away. Noe Martinez didn't recognize how much time was left on the clock. Well, the Hannah Golden Eagles took the lead with two three-pointers. Maintained the lead after one. We'll head to the second quarter back after this on RealSportsLive.com. Forever memory. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here after the uh, quarter break. St. Joe Bloodhounds on the uh, sidelines. Fell down 6-0, trailed 10-8. Meanwhile, the Hannah Golden Eagles, after having that first quarter lead, break away as well, make their way out on the court. It'll be St. Joseph basketball as we start the second quarter of play. Inbound to play, and Silvero will run it. Over it goes to Trevino. Trevino got a man in the air, shot it, left it well short. Rebound, Golden Eagles. They want to run. In the front court with it is Torre. Torre has it, stumbles, pass it off instead to Rukaba. Rukaba backs it away, got it back to Torre. 7.37 to go. Torre over on the left side to Huerta. Huerta. Back to Rukaba. Reverse it to Torre. Out on top. Back to Torre. Torre looking, finds a man right side. Huerta for three. That's off the back of the rim. Rebound, St. Joe, another rebound for Esparza, his third of the game. Bloodhounds back with the ball on the front side, work it over in the hands of Garcia. Garcia, top of the key it goes to Trevino. Trevino back to Garcia. Silvero now handles the ball to Garcia. Back to Silvero for a long three, no. Rebound inside. Banker goes up and in for the Bloodhounds. That was Trevino with the stick back. Ties the game at 10 apiece. Hannah basketball. Golden Eagles have gone cold since hitting those first two three pointers out of the gate. They'll work the ball top of the key. Torre wants a three. That won't go either. Rebound. Golden Eagles get it back on an offensive board by Rukaba. Rukaba goes baseline, elevates, pass it outside to Huerta. Huerta quick double team on him. Finds Martinez. Martinez one hands it over to Torre. Torre backs it away from traffic to the free throw line. Nothing there for Jimenez. Jimenez back to Torre. Good defense by the Bloodhound. This time the zone. Just forcing Hannah to stay outside. Penetration and a foul is called. Stopping play with 6.07 to go here in the first half. Hannah will substitute in two players in the ball game. Victor Campos and also Chris Turns checks in. Exiting Jaime Rucaba and Noe Martinez. Golden Eagle ball. Torrey has the ball. Veers right side. Stopped his dribble. Needs some help. Hands it off. Off the dribble is Turns. Turns gets it over to Huerta. Huerta to Torrey. Torrey, overhead pass on the baseline, layup, no good. Rebound, offensive board, put it up and in. Austin Jimenez, man on the spot for the Golden Eagles, gives them a lead back. Now they can put that full court pressure on. Bloodhounds, break the pressure. Down the right side, Silvero takes it to the free throw line, backs away. Top of the key, Trevino, right side. Garcia, jumper for the tie, yeah. Cesar Garcia with the bucket. 5.22 to go in the half. Hannah back with the basketball. Working it around the perimeter are the Golden Eagles. Torrey has the ball. Bounce pass near the free throw line. Ball stripped and stolen on the turnover. Here come the Bloodhounds in the front court. Lay up, no good, but Peter Silvera is going to go to the line. 5.02 to go here in the half.
Free throw time for Peter Silvero. Misses the first. We'll get that bar out of the way at halftime. We'll raise that camera just a bit. Next free throw coming up for Silvero. Misses that one. 0 for 2 on the trip. Hannibal, 4.55 remaining. He goes with the ball. 4.42 remaining here. Overhead pass for a three for the Eagles. That's off the rim, no good. Long rebound. Here come the St. Joe Bloodhounds. Fadeaway jumper, that's well short. Rebound by the Eagles, and back we come the other way. Eagle ball, game tied with 4.20 to go here in the half. Torre has the ball. Over to Rukaba. Rukaba back to Torre. Plays catch. Step back, launching a three. That one's way strong. Rebound. St. Joe's got it again. Now they lose it nearly, but get it back. Bloodhound basketball still tied. 3.55 to go here in the first half. Silvero, one-hander over to Garcia. Garcia in the corner to Silvero. Silvero, top of the key. Garcia makes a move, goes inside, lays it up, missed it. Rebound, Golden Eagles. Missed chance that time for the Bloodhounds, and a foul called at the midcourt strike. Substitution ready to check into this game for Brownsville St. Joe's Bloodhounds. Good crowd on hand over here for the Hannah Golden Eagles, which traveled over to St. Joe to watch this game on a Tuesday night during Thanksgiving week. This will be our last broadcast until we hit the airwaves Friday night from San Antonio High School football playoffs. Round two for St. Joseph coming to you from Central Catholic High School in San Antonio. That's the site. I already spoke with those individuals up there. They've got a nice place secured. Inside and a big fall. St. Joe Cesar Garcia gets up okay. He'll be called for the foul. Non-shooting foul. Hannah will inbound the ball on the baseline. That's the we'll call that a shooting foul. With 3.12 to go here in the half. Victor Campos at the line. First one good. Campos ready with another. made that back to a two point lead for the Eagles St. Joe with the basketball 3-12 to go in the half Bloodhounds in the front court Silvero Silvero between the two circles works it left side to Garcia each team has scored four points here in the second quarter Bloodhounds with it Silvero bounce pass inside shot goes up no good Rebound, Golden Eagles in the front court. Chance to build on the lead. Lay up, no good. Rebound, knocked out of bounds. Touch last by St. Joseph. Eagle basketball with 2.38 remaining here in the first half. Huerta has the ball. Right wing pass back to Huerta. Over to Torrey. Torrey back to Horta in the corner for a three for the Eagles. Yep. Two-pointer by Victor Campos. Timeout called by St. Joe's Bloodhounds. They trail by four. They trail by as many as six here in the first half. 219 still to go. We'll be back after this on RealSportsLive.com.
back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here after the timeout, and the St. Joe Bloodhounds are trailing the Golden Eagles of Hannah. Hannah talking things over, leading 16 to 12 in the game. Led 10 to 8 after a quarter of play. We resume play with 2.19 left here in the half. It'll be St. Joe basketball in the backcourt. No pressure put on by the Eagles. So the Bloodhounds will bring it into the front court. 2.07 to go here in the half. Bloodhounds working around the perimeter. Into the corner, down four. Two minutes left here in the half. Garcia handles it. Takes it to the right side. Beat a man. Goes baseline. Top of the key. In the paint. Shot left short. Rebound. Eagles come out of there with it. Quickly to the right side. Shot blocked out of there. Offensive board, though. Put it up and in. Golden Eagles trailing to play. Rukaba with the putback. Minute 35 to go in the half. Six-point Eagle lead represents their biggest lead of the game. The second time they've had that six-point lead. Bloodhounds with it. Rodriguez, top of the key. Plays catch to Mauricio Rodriguez. Garcia, nothing there for him. Bloodhounds working it beyond the perimeter. Over goes to Garcia. In the paint. Jumper. That's in. Camillo Trevino with a bucket. He's got six. Minute three left here in this first half. Huerta has the ball for the Eagles. Pass over to Torre. Torre. Right side to Huerta. Huerta on the dribble. Torre. Top of the key. Huerta. Free throw line. Jumper on the way. That won't go by Jimenez. Bloodhounds with the rebound. Neto Garza with the board three pointer by the Bloodhounds that's too strong rebound Eagles they want to run again Rukaba takes it coast to coast ball knocked out of bounds it'll touch it last 24 seconds left here in the half it'll be St. Joe basketball in the back court Work at front side with Garcia. Long three. Too strong. Eagles back on the attack. Five seconds to go. Loose ball. Picked up by Rodriguez and he's fouled. 1.7 seconds left. Marte Rodriguez with the steal. And he'll be shooting... Free throws here. As a team, St. Joe just one of four from the free throw line thus far. Marte Rodriguez hasn't shot a free throw yet. Rolls the first one in. His first point of the game. Cuts the Hannah lead to three. Eagles will have 1.7 seconds to launch some kind of long shot here. Free throw. Misses everything. Eagles will get a chance to throw this ball in. Now they can go long with it. On this long pass. They throw it ahead. They get a shot from half court. This will count. No good. One half in the books. Hannah Golden Eagles with the lead on the road. Here in Brownsville, St. Joseph. Home of the Bloodhounds. 18-15. 18-15. Statistics and more coming up. This is RealSportsLive.com. Time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. 
Forever Memories is for you.
Back here, set to go for the second half. St. Joe Bloodhounds taking on the Hannah Golden Eagles. And welcome back to the coverage here as we start the third quarter of play. Bloodhounds taking on Hannah. Hannah led 10 to 8 after a quarter, outscored the Bloodhounds 8 to 7 in the second quarter, and lead by the three point margin. Leading scorer, Azers Huerta, with six points, but he got those early for the Hannah Golden Eagles. Meanwhile, six points apiece for Cesar Garcia and Camillo Trevino for St. Joseph. Hand of basketball as we start the third quarter of play. Torrey top of the key, it goes to Huerta. Huerta and Torrey play catch. High pass, tip. Torrey saves it back in bounds to Huerta. Rukaba with it. Bounce pass back to Torrey. Back over to Huerta, back to Torrey, back to Rukaba. Torrey again. 7.27 7.27 to go. Ball deflected and stolen. Bloodhounds, good defense that time. Now they'll have the ball. In the front court, handed off to Silvero. Silvero to Trevino, back to Silvero. Over to Garcia. 7.06 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Garcia to Silvero, holds up some four fingers, sets up the play. Slow pace here to start this second half between these two teams. Lete passes it inside, gets it back. Over to Garcia. Garcia finds a backdoor cutter layup good. Esparza with the basket. Eagles with the ball. In the front court, work it right side. Garza lost it on the turnover. Bloodhounds get it back. Chance to take the lead for St. Joe. Front court, Garcia. Ball deflected on the baseline. Hannah touches it last. Out of bounds, stay here. St. Joe will trigger the inbound play. Silvero throws it in. Around the perimeter they go. Into the corner. Now the baseline move is made and the shot is left short. Rebound, Golden Eagles. Hannah maintains control of the lead here in this game. St. Joe's had chances. They tied it once but just can't get on top. Banker goes up. That won't go. Fight for the rebound. Whistle and a foul call. Armstrong missed the shot. Fought for his own rebound. Foul called on blood, the Bloodhounds. Stops the clock with 5.50 remaining here in the third quarter of play. And a ball. From the corner, in trouble. Another foul call. This time they'll get Trevor Lette of Brownsville St. Joseph. Golden Eagles have yet to score here in this third quarter of play. Puerta has it. Right side, Rukaba. Back to Torre. Try the left side. Huerta looks inside. Tip, stay here. 5.30 remaining here in the third quarter. Hannah inbound the ball. Step through. Shot blocked out of there. Nice block shot by Trevino. Back on the Bloodhounds. Another chance to take the lead. Garcia inside traffic. Has his shot blocked. Out of bounds though, Eagles. Block shots on either end of the court that time down. Bloodhounds have it. Inbound play for Trevor Lette. Threw it off his own man's leg, and that's a turnover. Off Trevino's leg, right back in the hands of Lette before he could step in bounds. 5-11 to go here in the third quarter. Hannah Ball. Huerta catches, gets it to Torrey, right back to Huerta. Overhead to Torrey in the front court. Back to Huerta. Huerta to the free throw line. Going to work is Armstrong. Nothing there. Back outside to Huerta. In the lane. Shot it. Made it. Jesus Huerta with a running one-hander. Lead back to three for the Hannah Golden Eagles. St. Joe with it. Trevino. Right side to Garcia. 
Garcia to Silvero. Looking, nothing there. Outside to Garcia on the left wing. Back to the top of the key. 4.29 to go in the third quarter. Garcia, overhead pass in the corner. Step through, shot up. Rolls softly home for Jacob Esparza. Esparza has six. 4.13 to go here in the third quarter. Hannah with the ball. Top of the key to Torre. Right side pass to Huerta for three. That's short. Rebound, Bloodhounds control it. Silvera with the board. Bloodhounds another chance to take the lead here with a bucket and a foul called in the open court. Torre trying to seal off Silvera will be whistled for the foul. Substitute off the bench for Brownsville St. Joseph. Here comes Marty Rodriguez. End of the game for Hannah's Golden Eagles, Victor Campos. 3.57 left here in this third quarter of play. St. Joe basketball. Trevino over to Rodriguez. Marty Rodriguez in the corner it goes to Esparza. Back top of the key and a steal. Here come the Golden Eagles in the front court for the layup. Good. With the bucket, Victor Campos. Three twenty-four to go here in the third. Brownsville St. Joe with the ball. Garcia has it. No look pass to the free throw line to Trevino. Goes inside. Ball knocked out of his hands. Touch last by Hannah. St. Joe Academy basketball. On the baseline, they'll throw it in. Long pass out to Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets it back with 3.05 to go in the third. Plays catch with Silvero. Silvero wants Rodriguez to cut through. Clear out, top of the key for Silvero. Cesar. Over to Garcia for a three. That's no good. Rebound, Golden Eagles. Campos with the board. It's fourth of the game. Eagles ball, leading by a three. 2.45 to go in the third quarter. Top of the key, open three. Yeah. Jose Torre, they dared him to shoot it, and he drops it in. Timeout. The lead is back to six. We had that a couple of times with the Golden Eagles in the first half. First time they lead by that much here in the second. We'll be back after this. This is realsportslive.com. Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here, high school basketball continues on RioSportsLive.com. I'm Joe Bowling with you. Hannah's Golden Eagles will extend the lead to six. And now they have the ball as we resume play. Or St. Joe has the ball as we resume play. And they'll work it around the perimeter. Jumper from the elbow. Got it. Camillo Trevino. Trevino has eight. Leads his team in scoring. Cuts the lead back to four. Hannah with the ball. Golden Eagles, that's an open three, and good again. Jaime Rucaba wide open, drops it in from three. Eagles with a seven-point lead, minute 57 to go here in the third quarter of play. Bloodhounds work it to the left side, lay up, no good. Rebound by the Eagles. Eagles in the front court, Torrey has it. Plays catch with Rucaba over for a three by Campos, and he hits it, another three. Campos has ten, and the Eagles are suddenly connecting beyond the arc. Double-digit lead for Hannah. St. Joe ball, the Eagles have outscored the Bloodhounds 13-6 to six here in the third quarter. Off the dribble, Rodriguez. Double-team comes on him, and a whistle and a foul. From the arc here in the third quarter, the Eagles are three of four. In the game, they're 5 of 15. They went 0 for 5 in the second quarter. 
this third quarter at the three-point line, which is spelling the difference. Minute 19 to go. They're going to attend to one of the Golden Eagles. Hopefully that's just a cramp. We'll be back after this. High School Basketball continues on RioSportsLive.com. With a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here as we resume play. Bloodhounds with the ball. And Bloodhounds are going to have to solve this hand at Golden Eagle. First of all, defense and then the offense. Eagles are connecting beyond the arc on the offensive side. There's a foul call. Got all kinds of messages coming across on our Facebook Live. Uh, normally, my wife's able to keep track of that, but right now she's operating a camera and switching at the same time. Had one comment asking me, how do we do this? Well, <laughs> with mirrors right now, I put together this on a shoestring budget and a half. There's a long three that won't go for the Bloodhounds. Rebound. Eagles control it. And it back in the front court. Left side pass on the baseline. Better pass, reverse layup, no good. Miss point blank by Noah Armstrong and a whistle and a foul call. Bloodhound ball, 29 seconds to go here in the third quarter. They've been outscored 13-6. to six. There's a three wide open. Back of the rim, no good. Whistle on the rebound. They'll call that on the Golden Eagles. Non-shooting foul, Bloodhound ball. Inbound play to Garcia. Garcia on the three. Yeah. Cesar Garcia, and that's a big three. 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Eagles with the ball in the front court. Working off the dribble to the right side. Top of the key, that's an NBA three and some. Missed, rebound, offensive putback, no good. Rebound by the Bloodhounds, one second to go. Three-quarter court shot, no good. We played three, and that was a big third quarter for Hannah's Golden Eagles. They started connecting beyond the arc. Bloodhounds cut it to seven. We'll be back after this on RealSportsLive.com. Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. But well, cheerleaders making some noise here, trying to get their fans and their crowd and their their team fired up here. We've got eight minutes on the clock and one quarter remains for these two teams. Brownsville's Hannah Eagles have led throughout. Brownsville St. Joe Bloodhounds have yet to score double figures in a quarter. We're held to eight in the first, seven in the second, scored nine in that third. The last three of that came on a three-pointer deep in the third quarter of play. St. Joseph will inbound the ball at the mid-court stripe. They'll have the ball to start this fourth quarter play. Lette, Silvero, Trevino, Garcia, and Esparza in the game for the Bloodhounds on the fourth quarter. Top of the key, off the dribble, it's Trevino. He's taken away from him. Here come the Eagles in the front court for a layup. Good. Noah Armstrong with a steal in the bucket. Whistle, and now a player down on the St. Joe side. 7.35 to go. Fans, we're looking for some sponsors to help us, especially this weekend when we're broadcasting high school football. Playoff action coming your way from San Antonio. Bloodhounds in action on Friday. Los Fresnos in action on Saturday. And your ad, in this case, could be right here.
With a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here, player gets up, uh, assisted off the court, Camille Trevino. Looks like he might have turned an ankle. The Bloodhounds will look... Check on him. Meanwhile, they trail by nine, 33-24. Victor Campos leads the way in scoring for the Hannah Golden Eagles with 10 points in the ball game. Only player in double figures. Cesar Garcia has nine to lead the way for the Bloodhounds. It'll be Bloodhound basketball as we resume play here in the fourth quarter. 7.27 remaining. Bloodhounds into the front court with a long pass to the baseline. Turning shot up, rolls in. Esparza with a nice soft touch on the baseline jumper. He's got eight. Lead is to seven. Hannah with the ball. Eagles bounce pass. Baseline. Shot blocked out of there. Tremendous block by Cesar Garcia. This Bloodhound team, uh, I said it during last week's broadcast when Harlingen was here. They got three starters that are playing football. And at least one primary substitute still wearing a football uniform. They play on Saturday trying to extend their season. On the dribble is Garcia. Here's a jumper at the free throw line. Good made by Noah Armstrong. Eagles back up nine. Bloodhounds with the ball on the baseline. Overhead pass to Garcia. Garcia goes in the lane, dishes off, threw it away. That's one of those, Garcia had a three-foot shot, was trying to get a two-foot shot with a delivery to Camillo Trevino, who was already working on the offensive board positioning. Hannah basketball, 6.36 remaining in this ball game. The Eagles led 10-8 to at the end of a quarter, 18-15 at the halftime break, outscored the Bloodhounds 13-9 in the third, but outscored them 4-2, another block shot by Garcia. In the front court, here come the Bloodhounds. No numbers. Turnover right back to you. Here come the Golden Eagles. They've got numbers. Left-hand side. Shot up. Another block shot. Ball goes out of bounds and a whistle and a foul call. That's another block shot for Garcia. I've got him for five in the game. 6-13 remaining here in the game. Off the bench. Here comes Trevino back in. Testing out that ankle. Bloodhounds with the ball. Down... Nine Going to have to get to work on the offensive end. Silvero hounded defensively. Good show this time by Jesus Puerta. Garcia off the dribble. Good look on the shot. Off the glass, no good. Rebound, Golden Eagles control it. Front side for the Eagles. Around the perimeter, it goes to Torre. Torre to Huerta. Huerta, bounce pass, top of the key. Turning over Armstrong. Armstrong to Jimenez. Finds an open shooter. Huerta bang. Jesus Huerta now in double figures. Joins Campos with a team lead. Ten apiece. Eagles up 11. They've outscored the Bloodhounds 6-2 here in the fourth quarter. Bloodhounds basketball. Silvero. Top of the key. Garza. Check that. That's Trevino. Over for a three. That one's off the back of the rim. Rebound. Bloodhounds get it. Work it outside to Silvero. He wants a three. Missed that one. Bloodhounds can't connect beyond the arc. 5-10 to go in the ball game. Substitutions reeling in off of both benches. It'll be Hannah basketball once we get things sorted out. 5-10 to go. They'll throw it in. Work at front side. Eagles with an 11-point lead. In the corner. Head and shoulder fake. Baseline move. Nothing there. Jumper from 17. Good for Campos. Victor Campos now with a dozen. Eagle lead. It's 13. 8-2 fourth quarter for Hannah's Golden Eagles. St. Joe basketball. Garcia brings it across the timeline. Got a screen, top of the key three. Yeah. Cesar Garcia's got a dozen points. 
The lead is down to 10. Eagles break the pressure. Baseline jumper, no good. Rebound, a lot of contact in there. Jump ball call, possession arrow, favors St. Joe. Getting real physical for these rebounds right now. Both sides. Hannah will keep it on the possession change. Golden Eagles, Jose Torre to put it into play. Finds a man, foul call. That'll send Noah Armstrong to the free throw line. Stops the clock with 4.26 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Armstrong at the line. Armstrong on the night. Hasn't shot a free throw yet. He's got four points. For the Golden Eagles of Hannah. Misses that. Eagles as a team from the free throw line are just four of seven, 57%. Meanwhile, St. Joseph Academy just two of six, 33%. So nobody riding home about free throw shooting here tonight. Free throw coming up for Armstrong. Misses that one. Rebound. Golden Eagles put it up and in. Man on the spot was Jaime Rucaba. Easy stick back for him. He's got nine points and seven boards. Bloodhound basketball. Top of the key is Silvero. To Rodriguez. In the corner it goes for three. That misses everything. Rebound by the Eagles. And they want to slow the pace. Torre brings it up. Man-to-man defense by Silvero. Gets it back. 3.57 remaining. Armstrong turns, squares up to Campos. Campos over to Torre. Torre puts it on the floor. Picked up by Huerta. Right side pass to Campos. 3.37 to go. Campos wants a long three. That's no good. Rebound. Hannah controls that. Rukaba got the board, whistle, and a timeout call. 3.31 remaining, hand of Golden Eagles and the Bloodhounds of St. Joe. In action here on RealSportsLive.com. With a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Second basketball of the game here on RealSpotsLive.com. Whether you're on Facebook, on YouTube, on your uh, smart TV, on Roku television, on Apple TV. Was asked today about the Apple TV. All you have to do is go on Apple or Roku. And search for the BoxCast app. Once you find that, search for RealSportsLive.com. And we are right there. You can watch this on your smart TV. You can also watch it on YouTube. My dad's watching on YouTube. Say hello to him watching in Harlingen. Earlier today, we were in Los Fresnos. 3.18 left here in this ball game. Hannah with the lead in the ball. Golden Eagles have never trailed in this ball game. Football action coming your way Friday night. From San Antonio, live video and audio. What a move made by Torre. Pass it outside to Rucaba. Rucaba dribbles it over to Huerta. They'll run some motion here. 2.53 to go. Torre with a catch. Coming out to guard him is Silvero. Beats him on the dribble. Campos, one to three. Made it. Victor Campos drifted out beyond the arc again. He's got 15 points. 2.36 2.36 remaining in the game. Bloodhounds have gone cold here in the fourth. Long three in the corner. No, misses everything. Rebound, Golden Eagles. Backcourt trap. Overhead pass in the front court to Campos. Campos wants another jumper. Made it again. Inside the arc, two-pointer for Campos. He's got 17. Bloodhounds with the ball. On the drive, Garcia. Shot blocked. Stops play with 2.04 remaining. 
Substitution ready to check in the game for Brownsville St. Joe as Trevor Lette will check in. Earlier today, we were in Los Fresnos. Got to see the Falcons in action. Here at St. Joe Academy, taking on Brownsville Hannah. Free throw time for Cesar Garcia. Inbound play for the Eagles. 16 point lead in the backcourt. Ball nearly stripped. Still in the backcourt for the Eagles. Across the timeline, Rukaba finds Campos, puts it on the floor. 17 footer. Missed it. Rebound, St. Joe. Bloodhounds. Having trouble. Silvero brings it front side. Now he gets in the air. Passes it outside. Garcia, three ball. In and out, no good. Rebound. Campos has it for the Golden Eagles. Baseball pass ahead. Right side layup. Good. Noe Armstrong beat him down court. Made the basket. For Armstrong, he's got six points. Minute 21 left here in the game. St. Joe back with the ball. Left side. Three-pointer. Back of the rim. No good by Silvero. Torrey got the rebound for the Eagles. Overhead pass, front side Rukaba in the corner, back outside to Torrey. Finds Rukaba, under a minute left in the game. Golden Eagles, big second half here, about scored St. Joseph 30 to 15, doubled them up here in the second half. Take this lead. Torrey off the dribble. Coming out to guard is Trevor Lutton. Tries to beat him on the dribble. Threw it out of bounds. Torrey got a little too cute on the dribble. Turnover, though. Not much time left for St. Joseph. Down 18. Bloodhounds with the basketball in the front court. On the dribble is Garcia. Right side pass to Trevino. Top of the key, Garcia. Outside for a three, and it's no good. Rebound. Bloodhounds control that one. Garcia has it. Tries to dribble away from the double team. Tied up. Possession arrow will stay here with 20 seconds left here in this game. Reminding you, high school football coming your way Friday night from San Antonio. Brownsville St. Joseph will be in action. And then on Saturday, we've got you covered with Los Fresno's game. Three-pointer made by Garcia. We're securing all the rights for that, making sure everything is... Signed contractually. We had to agree to pay a hefty franchise fee for the rights for that broadcast. Timeout on the court. Final 15 seconds after this on RealSportsLive.com. A soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. Back here, the St. Joe Bloodhounds break out of their huddle with 15 seconds left in this ball game. Hannah's Golden Eagles, though, with the lead and on their way to a victory. And a gym where it's not easy to win. Eagles will throw it in in the backcourt. Double team comes. They'll quickly throw it ahead. Rukaba over the top to Campos. Back over to Huerta in the corner. Four seconds to go. Three, two, one. Ball game over. Hannah Golden Eagles win this one going away. Beat the Bloodhounds of St. Joe 48 to 33. Leading scores in the game. Victor Campos leads everybody with 17 first half points. A little extracurricular stuff after that play. Campos led the way with 17. Huerta with 10. Nine points for Rukaba, six for Armstrong, three for Jimenez, three for Torrey. Meanwhile, the Bloodhounds had just four players score in the game. Cesar Garcia had 16, Jacob Esparza with eight, Camilo Trevino had eight, and Marte Rodriguez finished with one. Hope you enjoyed our broadcast. Reminding you, Brownsville, St. Joe Bloodhounds and football action on Friday night will be coming your way at 6 o'clock with a kickoff. But again, reach out to me, if you will, on Facebook, message me, or send an email as we are continuing to wrap up sponsors for both 
that game and the Saturday afternoon Los Fresnos game. I got the rights to do it. I'm just making sure the sponsorship is covered to handle the broadcast. This one's in the books. Final score, 48-33. Hannah defeats St. Joe. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Watch it back on archives. Until then, I'm Joe Bowling. Till next time, good night.
Nine Money, Carlos and Seven, Andres Martinez, our receiver. How good are these guys without him? They're all right. So those are three spots. Three, three, three starters and six guys. John Paul. You know, the record doesn't show it, but and the, and the, and the, and the record and the scores, they don't show it, but if we play the net district, I think our scores would be very similar to you have to play guys like all Saints week in and week out. They got some questions, and if we're not careful, are they as good as last year's team was? They're about the same count.
This is live coverage coming your way from Brownsville, Texas. It's a home of the St. Joe Bloodhounds as the Harlingen Cardinals are in town to take on St. Joe. Broadcast will start in approximately one minute. And a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to another broadcast here on RealSportsLive.com. Joe Bowling with you, coming to you in Brownsville, Texas, on a Tuesday night. Boys basketball action as the St. Joe Bloodhounds are at home to take on the Harlingen Cardinals. Cardinals had several preseason games, and they look good in their uh, outings. And the St. Joe Bloodhounds are coming in here with a few players that are still playing football. But yet, this is still going to be a scrappy bunch. Thanks again for joining us on our broadcast. Live coverage coming your way on our website, on Facebook Live, on YouTube, on Roku Television, on Amazon TV. My friends, I'm telling you each time that we come out, we're growing and getting this thing into better shape. Again, the Cardinals are in black uniforms with the red trim, and the St. Joe Bloodhounds will be in the white uniforms with the red trim, and they're getting set to announce the starting lineup, so I'll have, so have the playing of the national anthem. I'm going to turn the microphone over to the public address announcer, and then I'll come back and get to the starting lineup. It's the St. Joe Bloodhounds taking on the Harlingen Cardinals, and this is RealSportsLive.com. Number one, Jenner. Ah. 
Welcome back here again to our broadcast, and thanks again for joining us here. Whether you're watching it on the website on www.riosportslive.com, whether you're watching it on Facebook, whether you're watching it on YouTube, whether you're watching on your Roku television, your Apple TV, doesn't matter. Thank you for joining us here for our live broadcast. Boys basketball coming your way from St. Joe. They have the starting lineups announced just in case you couldn't pick up on the PA announcer, which we'll get that fixed as well down the road. The Cardinals will start with Michael Ariano as one of the starters. The other starters are Jeremy Vazquez, Rene Castillo, Cameron Gonzalez, and the final starter will be Matthew Sessler. For the St. Joe Bloodhounds, they'll be starting with Cesar Garcia, also Peter Silvero, Trevor Lette, Jacob Esparza, and Camillo Trevino. Bloodhounds in the white uniforms with the red trim. Harlingen Cardinals in the black uniforms with the red trim. And eight minutes on the clock. Good crowd on hand from the Harlingen side. Good crowd here at home for the St. Joe Bloodhounds. This gymnasium can get loud in a hurry. And these two teams should put on a good show to open boys basketball in the 2017 season right here in Brownsville, Texas. Thanks again for joining us. And away we go. Center circle. For the Cardinals is going to be Jeremy Vasquez. The back tip is controlled, though, by the Bloodhounds of St. Joe. And away we go. Peter Silvero will run the point. Brings it up to the right-hand sideline. Skips it over to Esparza around the perimeter. On the drive is Garcia. Lay it up. And in. Cesar Garcia. 2-0 for the Bloodhounds. Cardinals with the basketball. We're just underway. You're going to get more of a radio play-by-play than anything. But, hey, that's what I've done for 30 years. So, my friends, just... Bear with me as I get my feet back under me on this broadcast of basketball. Ariano takes it left side, lay it up and in. Michael Ariano for the Cardinals ties the game at two apiece. Backcourt pressure. Cardinals with a steal. Get it the corner. Three pointer. Ariano missed it. No good. Rebound taken down by the Bloodhounds and back they come quickly in the front court and a whistle blows and it's going to be a foul called against the Cardinals in the open court. 7-16 to go here in the first quarter. We're just underway for St. Joe taking on the Harlingen Cardinals. 
inbound play for the Bloodhounds in front of the Cardinal bench. Thanks again to the viewers who are watching us here. we got a three-camera shoot going on, my friends, as we've got cameras established in this gym. Missed shot that time by the Bloodhounds, and the Cardinals get the rebound. Game still tied as we're early on here in this first quarter of play. Cardinals with the ball, working around the perimeter. St. Joe has arguably three starters. There's a nice pass. Inside layup easy. Matthew Sussler for the Cardinals. He's got his first two points. The Cards up on top, and they again, after a made shot, will apply some full court pressure. Back court action. St. Joe with the basketball, and they'll work it, beat the press, get it in the hands of Peter Silvero. Got it in the paint, lost it. Turnover back to the Cardinals, and here they come. Long pass ahead of the pack to the left-hand side. He caught it, shot it, missed it, but got fouled, and that means Jeremy Vasquez will go to the free throw line. Cardinals at the line. Jeremy Vasquez. Stops the clock with 6.34 to go here in the first quarter. Cardinal crowd across the way. A good contingent coming down here to watch this Cardinal team. Vasquez, left-handed shooter. He'll get two on this trip. Makes the first. St. Joe scored the game's first two points. Cardinals now on a mini 5-0 run here in the first quarter. Vasquez, if he makes this, they'll they'll get to put on that full court press for the Harlingen Cardinals. Two for two on the trip for Vasquez. Vasquez, Ariano, and Sessler all with points for the Cardinals. Garcia has the ball in the backcourt. They'll back off the pressure, so the Bloodhounds will set it up offensively. Garcia picked up defensively by Cameron Gonzalez. Fires a pass in the paint. A lot of contact. Kick it back outside. Off the dribble comes Garcia. Skip pass over in the left corner. Caught there by Silvero. Silvero backs out. May have stepped on the line. He did. Early turnovers thus far for the St. Joe Bloodhounds. That's the third of the game. With 6.14 left here in the first quarter of play. Cardinal basketball. Ariano fires a pass in the left corner. Caught there by Rene Castillo. Castillo backs it back outside. Gets it over to Cameron Gonzalez. Gonzalez to Ariano. Ariano on the drive. Kicks it back outside. Caught there by Vasquez. Vasquez pulls the trigger on the 17-footer. That won't go. Rebound. Controlled by the Cardinals. In traffic. Sessler put it up. Right hand good. Vasquez with the miss. Sessler with the offensive rebound and the made bucket. He's got four points in the game. Cards on an 8-0 run. Bloodhounds trying to answer that. Shot up. A lot of contact. And it'll be free throws coming up for the St. Joe Bloodhounds. We do thank you again for joining us here for the broadcast. This is our first one that we actually pulled the trigger on getting to Facebook Live, the YouTube simultaneous with the broadcast going on on the website. Cameron Trevino at the free throw line. Missed on the first one. He'll get a second one here for the Bloodhounds. And that one's good. 5.38 to go in the first quarter. Cardinal basketball. Work it over in the hands of Vasquez. Vasquez on a clear out to the right side. Up to the top of the key near the midcourt stripe. Ariano. Ariano takes a look at the defense. Picked up by Silvero. Gave him some room. Launches a long three. That won't go. Rebound, pin balls, Cardinals have it for a moment. Loose ball, in the paint, whistle blows, possession arrow. Stay here, Cardinal ball. Cardinals will inbound the ball on the baseline. Thanks again. How about the camera angles here for you? Three cameras shoot. Once we get three camera operators going, then we'll have some real fireworks for you as we are just unveiling a little bit more and more as we are getting to the point of broadcasting quality sports here in the Rio Grande Valley. Told you our first broadcast when we had just those limited cameras, it was a small, small step to a big, big project. So each night we try to get a little better. Each day we try to get better. And here we are, boys basketball action coming to you from St. Joe. Inbound play for the Cardinals. Renee Castillo to throw it in. Gets it outside to Vasquez. Nothing doing for him. Ariano takes a look as it poked away, recovers, puts it on the floor now. Spins between a couple defenders, pass it outside for a three. That's by Cameron Gonzalez, but that won't go. Rebound by the Bloodhounds. Long pass ahead of everyone, but it's stolen. Garcia tried to throw it over everybody, but back there for the Cardinals. They'll return it as Gonzalez gets the steal. Cardinal basketball up 8-3, 4.51 to go here in the first quarter. Three wide open for Castillo. That won't go. Rebound in the paint. Cards have that. That won't go. And whistle and 
A foul called in the paint. We'll get that sorted out. It'll be against the Cardinals. Shooting wise, the Cardinals are 4 of 11 from the field. Overall, 36%. 4 of 7 inside the arc. 57%. 0 for 4 beyond the arc. Meanwhile, the St. Joe Bloodhounds have shot just two shots here tonight. 1 of 2 from the field. 50%. 436 to go in the first quarter. Bloodhounds with the ball down the left hand side, up between two defenders. Lay it up, but that won't go. Off the mark for Villarreal. Back come the Cardinals with the lead and the basketball in the front court. Work it on the left side, top of the key. There's a three by Ariano. That won't go. Cards get the rebound in traffic. Shot goes up. Whistle blows. That one's going to go against the Bloodhounds. And that'll send Cameron Gonzalez to the line. Gonzalez hasn't scored yet, has a couple of rebounds in the game for the Harlingen Cardinals, who trailed 2-0 and then went on a, a run that extended the lead. And now trying to add to it, Gonzalez makes the first. Substitution off the bench for the Cardinals. Here comes Jordan Crenshaw. He'll replace Matthew Sessler. Sessler, while he was in there, had four points and a rebound. Leads the team in scoring as he has a seat on the Cardinal bench. Next free throw for Gonzalez. Right-handed shooter lets it go, made it. Two for two on the trip. Cardinals as a team are four for four from the free throw line, and here comes the full court press. Back court action. The uh, Bloodhounds will beat it. Get it down the right side. Bounce pass out on top. Now driving inside. Garcia lays it up, but that won't go. Rebound for Gonzalez for the Cardinals, and back come the Harlage and Cardinals with four minutes left here in the first quarter. Ariano has it. Works it to the top of the key. Spins a pass in the left corner. Castillo catches there. Baseline jumper. Blocked out of bounds by Cesar Garcia. Garcia with the block shot. Inbound play coming up for the Cardinals. John Ortega will throw the ball in. From the baseline. Looking. Fires it outside. Work it into the corner. Back out on top. It goes to Ariano. Ariano guarded defensively by Daniel Villarreal. Takes it off the dribble. Charge. Easy call for the official that time as Ariano forced the issue into a double team. 3.43 to go in the first quarter. St. Joe will inbound the ball on the baseline. Meanwhile, there's moisture on the floor, so they'll attend to that. Additional broadcast coming your way. Hey, Thursday, we're going to be in two gyms broadcasting from Valley View as girls tournament action. The Valley View area will have 46 girls teams converge, and we'll be there for 30 games on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for you here on RealSportsLive.com. Off the dribbles, pass in the corner. There's an open three for the Bloodhound. Splash. Villarreal with the three. Shot for the Cardinals. That one rolls in. Vasquez with the basket. 12-6 to score. Here come the Bloodhounds into the front court. Off the dribble. Shot goes high off the glass and in. Made by Peter Zovero. Silvero with the basket, and now we got a four-point game. 2.57 left here in the first quarter. Cardinals will slow the pace. Ariano brings it up, front side. Handles it with either hand. Works it off the dribble, got past one defender. High archer goes up and in by Mariano. Michael Ariano has four points. He joins Matthew Sessler and Jeremy Vasquez in that department for the Cardinals. Here comes Silvero for the Bloodhounds. Kick it out. Ball stolen. Here come the Cardinals back off of the turnover. Working it into the front court. Layup goes up. Blocked out of bounds with a foul call. Vazquez to the line. Team foul number three against the St. Joe Bloodhounds. Stops the clock with 2.26 to go here in the first quarter. Harledge and Cardinals in town taking on the Brownsville St. Joseph Bloodhounds. Shot funnels home for Vasquez. Vasquez takes over the team lead in scoring now for the Cardinals. 
He's got five points. Michael Santiana checks in the game for the Cardinals. Vasquez, meanwhile, perfect on the free throw again. He's four of four from the line, has six points in the game. Cards up by eight. 220 left here in the first half. Villarreal has the ball for the Bloodhounds of St. Joe. Handed off to Garcia, baseline, bounce pass. Nice job of dishing off with the whistle blows and a foul called against the Cardinals. Garcia with a good penetration move down inside that baseline. Non-shooting foul, so the Bloodhounds will inbound it on the baseline. Inbound play coming up. Daniel Villarreal 